Ba -ba -da 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 -da. All right, getting started with uh, more Phoenix Wright. Is my fucking mic on? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Let's not have that mistake again. Looking at you, Persona 4 Golden. It's like, man, why is it so quiet? The game audio wasn't on, that's why. I'm going to increase the volume on my side because I actually want to hear the game a bit. I like the music. Listen to that. Doesn't it empower you? Aren't you ready to fucking defend some motherfuckers? That's what I'm waiting for. That's what I'm ready to do. I'm ready to sit down, have a good time. Actually, that's a lie. I'm not. I'm not ready to sit down and have a good time. I'm tired as fuck right now. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have played Final Fantasy IX before I streamed this. You know? Uh, on my own time, I'm, I'm going through Final Fantasy IX and... And I was playing it just a few seconds ago and I was like, Oh wait, shit, it's time for me to stream- Fuck! Man, I should have got some rest beforehand or something. Now I'm gonna have to sit here and, and read some shit. But, I mean, if I don't do it now, then I'll have to do it probably like a week from now and I'd rather not do that. Both for you guys and for me, because I, I need to know what the hell, what the hell is going on with this game. All right, so the Great Ace Attorney, Part One. Fucking, what the hell happened last time? I think we were in the middle of a trial, right? And the trial is, it's a murder trial. Of course, it's a murder. It's a murder case. Um, and apparently the victim was killed inside of a carriage. Right? I forgot what the fuck they called the carriage, but it was a carriage. And, um, we're going up against, uh, I forgot the fucking guy's name, but I'm assuming he's the descendant of the Von Karmas. Right? We're going up against that guy. Right? Big, big brass prosecutor man. And he's like, hey man, you need evidence? I got you. I brought the whole murder scene right here. And we were looking through it, right? And we're like, oh man. Oh, Oh man, this guy's got a lot of evidence. But also, apparently the witnesses are full of shit. Uh, you know, the uh, jury themselves are biased as hell, but it's okay. We got them to start doing a little infighting, right? And then we got Nana Puddin to, to, to come back to our side. She's the best. I love Nana Puddin. That's not her name, but that's what I'm calling her. All right, so. Uh, the Adventures of the Runaway Room, Part 2. We almost got a guilty verdict. Let's not, let's not fuck this up. Alright. So, yeah, where we last left off, we were in the middle of, of them giving their, um, their new versions of the, uh, what the fuck are they called? Testimonies. Alright? So, let's see, let me, let me just remember what the fuck I was doing here because <laughs> I remember we were streaming for a while and I was like oh shit I need to get going okay Von Zykes that's his fucking name a uh, phantom fist passenger right terribly sorry it's cold you're disgrace Beepo oh Beepo disgrace charging people extra uh. all right Hmm. All right, so the guy, they may, they may have not have been a fifth passenger, right? And the guy was just charging people extra. And, you know, they, I think they tallied up the, the numbers and they were like, Yep, that seems to make, let me see, make some sense. So, uh, we're, we're gonna go with that. All right, so, where are these testimonies? I only carried four passengers that night, I swear it, but... Well, I for one was told to pay five pences per bus. He fiddled us on the fare, he did. And then I saw the blood-curdling sight as well. It's all too much. I tell you, I saw McGilded stab the man. Everything I said before still stands. Oh, yes. Yeah, he stabbed him. He did it. That guy did it. He stabbed him real good. All right. So... Let's see, I guess I'm gonna just start pressing some shit. Huh. Only carried four passengers that night, I swear it. Five pences. He fiddled us on the fare, he did. 
Alright, well, I'm gonna press you. How much you charge you? This blood-curdling sight? You mean the murderer? Murderer? God. Murderer... The word murderer gets me. Because... It's like double ERs going in there. Wow, when you say it like that, when you say it like that, that sounds nefarious. Oof. <laughs> double ERs. No, uh, the way you spell murderer, it's, you know, M-U-R-D-E-R-E-R. -E -E -R, and it's like, oh. Oh, that's weird. Is that how you spell murderer? Am I crazy? I'm not crazy. You're crazy. Stop talking to me. <laughs> yes, sir. A loathsome sight. No one- I forgot her judge was fucking Santa Claus. A loathsome sight. No one should have witnessed the horror in the eyes of a man the moment his life is taken. Oh, well, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? I mean, I didn't actually see the exact moment the gent was stabbed. Oh, what the fuck, man? Good gracious, really? We have another witness who did, however. The banker has already testified to it. Hmm. But Mr. Faust didn't actually see the point at which the victim was killed. That may turn out to be very significant. I heard the banker gent next to me take a sharp intake of breath. See? And when I looked through the glass, that's when I saw the horrible blade poking out of the man's belly all covered in blood. Every time I see a knife now, I can't help, I can't help screaming, even when I'm eating. Tell you, I saw the guild that stabbed the man. All right, how did how do you stab him? So you saw the defendant, Mr. McGuild, stabbing the victim, Mr. Mason, who was sitting next to him. That's it's what I said, isn't it? And it's bothering me before it was. For just a brief moment, he hesitated before answering the question. Anyways, there was only two of them inside the carriage, wasn't there? There's been much talk of fifth passenger, but as of yet, zero evidence. Oh, listen, Mr. Zykes, just because you tuck off your fucking Dracula cape doesn't mean you gotta be all hoity-toity over there in your fucking corner, so just sit down and listen to my cross-examination, okay, please? Can we do that? Thanks. And what are we wasting all this time for? It's black and white. The man's guilty. Something about Mr. Fairplay's testimony just jars with me. I wish I could work out what it was. Hmm. Stabbed Manny did, I think so. Do you think so or do you know so? Earlier you testified that you saw the moment when the defendant allegedly stabbed the victim, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm, you said the victim was on the floor and described the assailant holding the knife in an ice pick grip. I suppose I might have, you know, yeah. Put put the cart before the horse, maybe? What is this? Well, I'm quite sure about most of it. I was driving the horse when I heard a scream from the seats of the roof. Oh, I expect that was me. That's when I turned around, yeah? Uh, yes, I saw it through the skylight. The gentleman on the floor, the knife was sticking out of his midriff. That's right, yes. And the fellow holding the handle was the famous man, yeah. So in short, you didn't see the moment when the victim was actually stabbed at all. I, I really thought I did, but uh... But when I go over it again in my head... No, I, I suppose I didn't actually see the precise moment of the stabbing, did I? Oh, okay. What 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 are you what are you doing? Hello, sir. Do you have something you need to say? You got something you got to get off your chest over there? Now you listen to me. I know what you're thinking. He didn't really see the exact moment the fellow was stabbed. What are the chances of that? Huh? Are you asking me or telling me? He's getting flustered. I might be able to extract some new information from him if I answer him cleverly. Could he have just happened to see the exact moment the crime was committed? Fucking no chance. Well, it's a little hard to believe, certainly. 
Unless you spend your time peeping through a skylight on the top of an omnibus, that is. Peeping? I'm a respectable city banker, I have, you know? And I know what I saw. I remember as clear as the Bratley Day. Brat, what? Bratley. I oh, don't fuck. What the fuck? The, the ball of rat. What the fuck is. You know what? I'm getting tired of this shit. Let's, let's have a little lesson here today, class. Fucking Google, can you tell me what, what, how to say this word? What the hell is this word? We live in the information age now. Now we can just look up things. Right? Uh. Come on, Google, how do you, how do you say it? What the fuck? Pronunciation, there we go. Say it for me, Google. You got it. Ballarat. As a as a Ballarat day. Baratly. <laughs> we out here in Barnes and Nobly? It was a grime scene, I don't mind telling you. You don't mind telling me, then tell me. Thank you, Mr. Fairplay. Oh, excuse me, if I was getting a little hot under the collar there, my lord. I would ask you to supplement your testimony with a clear statement about what exactly you saw. Oh, I can do that all right. I'll tell you just how grim it was. Did you think I forget the sight of those blood-soaked hands after the butcher stabbed the man? Not long ago, the trial very nearly came to an end. Somehow we managed to keep our chances alive here. I can't waste this cross-examination. I have to use it and bring some new facts to light. Um, if you're, not if you're not careful when you press these witnesses, the danger is that the jury will end up believing something unhelpful, as they did before. Maybe, but we can't let that fear of that happening stop us from uncovering important new information. Yes, you're so right. I am so right, thank you. I need to pay careful attention here. I don't want to miss even a flicker of a reaction amongst the witnesses. Remember, if you happen to spot one of these witnesses reacting in a strange way, fucking whip they ass. Get them. Alright. So... I tell you I saw him stab him. Yeah? Did you think I forget the sight of the blood-soaked hands after the butcher stabbed the man? No? It. Explain it to me. Blood-soaked? Ahem. <clears throat> well, perhaps soaked is laying it on a little thick there, but... But anyways, there was definitely blood all over them. Both of them were covered in it. And you saw that from the roof, through the skylight. Well, the skylight reasonably large, so I had a pretty good view. And there was a lamp on the inside of the carriage as well, so I'm quite sure of what I saw. Huh. This banker's late, latest statement. I feel sure there's something not quite right about that. I'm not so quite sure about that one, Chief. When you feel something doesn't add up, Mr. Nadahoda. That's a fun name to say. That's when you should have a good a good look through the court's records. Well, yeah, I can't press them. I can't, like, show evidence in the middle of a press, can I? Not long ago, this trial nearly came to an end. Okay, yeah. This is just, uh, we're speeding through this. Come on. Here we go. I forgot what the speed up button was. I'm trying to f I'm trying to figure it out so I can speed through that dialogue. I don't even think I could, to be honest. Okay. So he said blood soaked hands. I wish they would add that to the testimony. Uh, I think so. Yes. I can't. 
No, I can't present evidence. Blood soaked hands out there. Oh, well. Okay, well, at least the word blood soaked is in there, so I mean. Oh, does this look blood soaked to you, sir? Blood soaked hands? Well, I admit that soak might have been laying on a little thick, but uh. But, anyways, there was definitely blood all over them. Both of them, they were covered in it. Well, I'm very sorry to disagree, Mr. Fairplay, but this- Oh my god, I didn't know that I had the sword on me. Look how cool I am. But, that's more than a little peculiar. What? Oh, don't you wet me. Here are the gloves worn by the defendant, Mr. McGilded, on the night of the in question. Oh yeah, right. There certainly does appear to be a sizable dark colored stain here. But, as I'm sure you clearly see, it's only the right hand glove. Ugh. Is he biting his fucking cane? Jesus. Ugh. In short, Mr. Fairplay, your testimony is inconsistent. Ugh. But, but no, that can't be right. Oh yeah, Nana Puddin's ready to fuck you up. I got her follow-up, don't worry. So you're the liar here then. Ugh. And that guy's just gonna stab you. <laughs> That's right. You're quite clear about it. You said it, it with both hands. Ugh. Mr. Fairplay, if your last statement was a lie, it calls your entire testimony into question. You say you saw the moment the victim was stabbed, but is that really the truth? I, well, I... Objection. Oh no, you sit down. It was a simple mistake. You can't justify as accusing this man on lying. I don't know. I don't know, man. Simple mistake, nothing. You seem... I'm pretty sure if I go back in the court records, in the fucking log, you said a little snide-ass comment about it. So, how about you shut your fucking face? <laughs> yes, it wasn't both hands. It was only one. But the fact remains. The victim's blood was on the accused. Ah, uh, yeah. No. Mr. Fairplay categorically God damn, I can't see the word. Categorically stated that he saw blood all over both hands. Which means there's a strong possibility that this witness was deliberately trying to mislead the court. Oh well, why I'm a city banker for Pete's sake. My word should be the gold standard. Your Honor, I would like to ask if we can run a background check on this fucking witness. I'm sensing some foul play at hand. I'm a gentleman, not some gutter snipe. Upstanding member of society, don't per- uh, what? Per- pervert? Fuck. I'm not even gonna try. He's claiming to have no reason to lie. Oh no, I think he's a direct competitor. But is that really the case? Mr. Narahodo. If we had some evidence to explain why Mr. Fairplay might be lying, it could turn the tide of this trial completely. Something to show this man has a compelling reason to lie in his testimony. There has to be evidence. The music is telling me that there's evidence. Yeah, if only we had some evidence like that. Hmm, so the defendant has nothing. Phew! Ah, Mr. Naharu, did you see that? Yeah, he let an audible sigh of relief. Fuck that guy. Does that mean there is some evidence? I think perhaps we should consult the court records again. I mean, didn't I choose that there was evidence? Did I? I thought I did. <laughs> For Mr. Fairplay's reaction, I wonder if there's some evidence we haven't properly examined yet. Yes, we gotta look at everything in much de in as much detail as possible. My lord! Yes, counsel. The defense is ready to present evidence. Evidence that will clearly demonstrate why Mr. Fairplay has reason to lie in his testimony. I'm afraid, counsel. You're afraid of what? Of the truth? That before I can allow that to happen, I shall have to penalize... Wait, what? I have to penalize you for the, for the reckless turnabout. Ah, uh, I suppose that's fair play. <laughs> I see what they did there. Stupid. Dumbass joke. Very well. I hereby call on the defense to present its evidence. 
the evidence that demonstrates a motive for the witness alleged deception of the court. Let's see. What is this? Catalog of people who have borrowed money from the defense. High rate. Ooh. I don't even think I took a good look at this. Open this bad boy up. Proforleo contains all sorts of secrets in London's generi. I don't even fucking know the word. Oh dear. Do you really think we can ought to look inside? Well, it's not as though we know of London's person personally, so. Apart from our great detective friend, perhaps. Actually, I wonder. I assure you we will not find Mr. Shlom's names inside. Well, let's see what we find. Crack this bad boy open. Gosh, it's crammed full of with gentlemen's names, isn't it? Well, I suppose they're probably not all gentlemen at all, are they? After all, not everyone in this country is well off. Goodness! What is this? Look at this. Do you see the name here? Bruce Fairplay. Oh. Should that mean something to me? It does sound strangely familiar, actually. Bruce Fairplay, the witness testifying in this very moment. Oh yeah, of course. The banker. Why the hell is his name in here? He borrowed 20 guineas, did he? I still don't know what a fuck a guinea is. I'm assuming it's like a thousand? <laughs> Or 100,000, maybe? 200,000? That's a lot of money. And look, the repayment day is fast approaching. It's possible that this is just a coincidence, of course, but this could be very useful information. Hmm, I see. Ah, you tried to pull one over me now, did you? Ha ha! Ha ha! This is a list of the debtors who owe money to Mr. McGilded. Yes, a list of, of innocent victims crippled by the accused ex, ex- Fuck, I can't- Fuck, I can't read. Point is, amongst the name of these debtors is your name, Mr. Bruce Fairplay. Huh! What? Mr. Fairplay, are you- Are you currently in debt financially to the accused? No, well- it's barely worthy of being called a debt. According to this ledger, you owe 20 guineas. Not an inconsiderable sum of money, wouldn't you say? Yeah. <sighs> well, what if it? Let's suppose Mr. McGillard were to be found guilty of murder. What would become of your debt in that case? Hmm. These documents state that the loan agreement is f is for is forged between the two individual parties. Therefore. Were the creditor, the defendant here, to be sentenced to a capital punishment, all outstanding debts which were owed to him would be annulled. They would be, they would cease to exist. Cease to exist? Mr. Fairplay, is it not the case that you claimed in your testimony to have seen something you never in fact saw? In a devious attempt to annul your debt of 20 guineas to the defendant? Oh no. Oh no, they caught him. Red handed. Order! Order in my court, Mr. Bruce Fairplay. <laughs> yes, my lord. Let me ask you again. And be aware that your answer may have most serious implications upon your future, sir. That guy's gonna chip his teeth. It's giving me anxiety. Did you or did you not see the precise moment and time at which the defendant is alleged to have thrust in a knife into the victim? Your silence speaks volumes. You did not tell the truth in your testimony. All right. Now let's not make a melodrama out of this. Perhaps I did overstate the truth a pinch. A pinch. But it makes no difference. I definitely remember seeing blood on McGilded's hands, both of them. Objection. And yet, only one of the defendant's gloves, which we have here as evidence, is stained. So you keep saying. I, 
I wonder if I might be allowed to speak, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Faust. Faust, if I called him Faust. Faust, that's his name, not Faust. Well, the thing is, I think I remember seeing it myself as it happened. Seeing what? The blood, sir, on the assailant's hands. I think, yeah. I'm almost sure that it was on both of his hands, not just one. What? Ah, shit. It would appear that we're going to need further testimony from all the witnesses. This time, I would like to know precisely what you did and what you did not see. Do I make myself perfectly clear? Or all you motherfuckers are going on my naughty list? Mr. Narahoto. This is good news. The course of the trial seems to have shifted slightly, at least. Yeah... I might finally have a chance to turn things around here. What the witness really saw. There was blood on both hands of the assailant. I sincerely and distinctly remember that. However, I suppose you might say that I didn't see the exact moment the stabbing transpired, if that matters. I remember seeing the knife, and I remember seeing both of the attacker's hands with blood on them. I didn't see anything myself. Nope, not until I heard the scream. Anyways, the fact remains. There can't have been anyone else inside the carriage, or we all would have seen it. Oh, I see. You guys making Santa Claus lose his hair. Well, lo and behold. In truth of fact, not one of you was witness to the crucial moment the crime was perpetrated. Oh, I stuttered a little bit. I said murmured. I apologize, my lord, but honestly, there was no one else inside the carriage, and the man's hands were covered in blood. That much incriminating evidence is tantamount to saying we saw the man do it. That's really not what the testimony is about. Let us examine the interior of the omnibus once more. The victim's fresh blood is clearly visible on the seat, collaborating the witness's accounts. In other words, there is no substantial nor significant change in the facts of the case. Hmm. Very well. Your cross-examination, please, counsel. Yes, my lord. My lord. I love that effect. I love I love the aesthetic of stained glass. It's pretty cool. There was blood on both hands of the assailants. Okay. Do we have anything right now at this second that will disprove that? I highly doubt it. This is the knife found, right? Pretty sure I examined it before. There's an M on it, yeah. 18 letter M, unidentifiably Mr. Magnus McGilded, initials. And it's beautifully gilded, too. Hmm. Oh. What is it? Huh. Look at this M. Might it be a W? If you turn it upside down, it becomes a W. Did you set it to W for Wombo? Ah, uh, yes. This is one of those, you know, turnabout cases, I'm sure of it. I'm afraid I don't know. <laughs> I don't know at all. But what I'm sure is that this isn't it. Oh, well, that idea was quickly quashed. Damn it. You just set the knife to Wumbo? What was, uh. What? That part is the sheath, isn't it? Are you alright, Mr. Nanahuda? Oh, sorry, yeah. I just don't really like blades. Says the guy with a sword on his hip. Oh. Those don't seem like the words of a man with a large katana slung around his waist. That's not a blade. That's Cosmo's soul. Anyways, there's no sense in delaying it. Let's see what the blade looks like. Oh. Somebody spilled wine all over this. It's very decorative. 
It's a beautiful shade of red. Someone has some very beautiful looking blood. <laughs> That's a weird thing to say. It looks like a lot of blood. It surely is blood. The victims. The Englishman's blood looks like Japanese man's blood. I mean, we're both human. Did you think it wouldn't? Sorry, it's just, we've only just arrived here in Great Britain. I'm finding it a little hard to adjust. Yeah, I do understand. Huh. Anything else? Hmm. Okay. Can't find anything out of place. What? Oh no, I thought- Oh! Fucking Nintendo, damn it! <laughs> I thought I was pressing the back button. I was pressing the A button, my bad. Because, you know, A confirmation, B. Back out. All that other bullshit. Alright. We'll start pressing some statements. There's blood on both hands of the assailant. However, I suppose you might say that I didn't see the exact moment the statement transpired. Let's see. I remember seeing the knife and seeing both hands of the attacker. You didn't see shit. Okay, well, I'm gonna press, uh... I was about to call him Top Hat, but they all wear Top Hats. Froust, I'm gonna press you. You seem to have the most vivid memory. You definitely saw that, too. Blood on both hands. Yes, sir. I mean, I know what you're gonna say. Only one of the McGilded's gloves has any sign of blood on it. That's right. Thing is, as far as I remember, sir, when I looked down and saw Mr. McGilded sitting beside the other fellow, I don't believe he was wearing any gloves. He wasn't wearing these gloves. That's correct, sir. And I saw the blood on both his bare hands, quite clearly. Uh, it's true that dark colored stain of the dark leather gloves wouldn't have been easy to see. I should point out that the police officer who apprehended the accused on the night in question reported that there was no trace of blood on Mr. McGilda's gloved hands. There wasn't blood on his hand. Oh. Should we look inside the gloves? This is puzzling indeed. This must be significant somehow, I'm sure of it. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to think in my head right now. Reported there was no trace of blood on Mr. McGilda's gloved hands. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Well, he said there was no trace of blood on... Then what the fuck is this stain? Hold it. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to press him. Fuck, wrong button. Uh, you didn't see anything? Yes, yeah, sir. I didn't see anything. Yeah, I didn't mean to press this. Very wrong of me to make up a story and say I saw him stab the man. Wouldn't you agree, sir? Huh? I know, I don't know what you're insinuating, but I certainly wasn't making up stories. Still, to say you saw nothing isn't right either. No, I saw nothing at all. Mr. Beepo, you were driving your horse. At the very least, you must have enjoyed a good view of London streets. Yeah. Oh, please. You didn't even see that. It was cold that night. All I could see... <laughs> all I could do is keep from passing out. My head was fairly frozen solid. It would seem prudent to avoid traveling on the last omnibus servant of London's cold winter nights. Beepo! Oh. Uh. Jesus. Oh, Beepo. Alright. I don't want to present anything. I just want to examine these. You can't examine the inside. There's no... I mean, it doesn't seem to be any blood on the inside. Huh. Then where the fuck did the blood stain come from? Passengers both side of the carriage on the roof from day to night. Hmm.
Okay. Or I suppose you might say I didn't see the exact moment. There's blood on both of the assailant's hands. Hold it. No. The evidence tells us otherwise. We have the gloves the defendants were wearing on the night in question in the court records. I'm well aware of that, sir, but nevertheless. I know what I saw and I stand by it. The man had blood on both his hands. <sighs> he's, de he's defiant, even in the face of hard evidence. He's steadfastly refusing to admit that he might be mistaken about what he saw, but why? Your reasoning is dire. Dire? One hand or two, the sail- God, I can't even fucking read anymore. The salient point remains unchanged. Minutes after the grim scene, the victim's blood dripped guilt- guiltily- God, guiltily. That's a choice word. From the accused fingers. Hmm. God, I'm making no progress with this shit. Didn't actually see anything. Anyway, fact remains, can't have been anyone else inside the carriage. Hold it! Why do you say that? And everything you saw of the incident was through the skylight of the roof of the omnibus. That's right. It was fiercely cold that night, but the glass wasn't frosted over. Oh yes, I remember. I was shivering. It was so bitter. Which rather begs the question of why the pair of you were sitting on the roof deck in the first place. Well, I don't know about this young fellow, but I couldn't enter the cabin. What? Why not? It was locked from the inside. I tried knocking, but no one opened the door. It was locked? That's right. And it's a public bus service, for Pete's sake. That's not what I call fair play. Yes, I had exactly the same experience. I tried knocking, but the gents inside just gestured at me to clear off. So I had no choice but to climb up to the roof deck and look down longingly into the warm cabin below. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> well, I can assure you I wasn't just looking down. I was glaring long and hard. Like, like my penis. <laughs> Listen, too easy of a joke to make. You gotta make it. And that's precisely why I can tell you with absolute confidence that if there was anyone else at all in the cabin, I would have noticed. An equivocal, an equivocal, oh god, I can't even say the word. An equivocal? Unequivocal, I would say. Fuck, I still fucked it up. I'm not sure about these two witnesses. Could they really have seen everything inside the cabin through the skylight? Oh, fuck. Whatever I just... I, I looked away, and I pressed the A button. I didn't even get to read it. I suppose they would have had a bird's eye views from the roof. The birds generally have very keen eyesight. Thank you. That's all clear. What you said does make sense. Very good. Continue with the cross-examination. I did not mean to press that button. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, I got it. I got it, Mikotoba. Wish I could just skip the fucking letters, though. Perhaps we gotta confirm what they were saying with their own eyes as much as possible. Yeah, I know, I fucked up, okay? Maybe we can examine the evidence firsthand of the omnibus. Like, we did that, though. We did that already, though, earlier. I'm just gonna head to that statement again. So I can get that choice again, because I fucked up. Hold it! Everything you saw, that's right. It's fiercely cold. Oh, yes, I remember it, too. Which begs the question. Hmm. It was locked from inside, couldn't open it. Alright. I'll try my best not to, like, skip over... Okay, not sure about these two witnesses. Could they really have seen everything inside the skylight? 
they might not have been able to. Allow me to confirm one thing, Mr. Fairplay. You are riding this omnibus. And the witness and, and witness the events in the cabin through the skylight and the floor on the upper deck. Is that right? That's right, yes. In that case, there's a portion of the cabin interior that that would have been out of sight from you. What? By golly, really? By gee golly, really? Obviously, at this stage, we can't say for sure. But the possibility cannot be denied that at the time of the incident, there could have been another passenger in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus. Objection! Enough hypothetical mandering. Ma mandering? Me mean mean fuck! <laughs> mandering. That's the word. I did it. My Nipponese friend. The prosecution demands that you sustain your claims. After all, the scene of the crime is here in the flesh. Very well. I will uphold the prosecution's demand. Yeah, but you never uphold any of my fucking demands. You will identify the area of the cross-section of uh, plans of the omnibus. Wait, what? Fuck. Did I just have a stroke? You will identify the area of this cross-sectional -se plan. Fuck! Cross-sectional plan of the omnibus. Where exactly in the omnibus are you suggesting that this... Okay, yeah. I mean... I'm gonna assume if he was looking directly down, he would be sitting here, so he wouldn't really have a sight about this. Take that. Both rows of seats on the roof face in the direction of travel. Whereas the seats in the enclosed cabin face each other. Which means... The visible part of the cabin which passengers on the roof deck can see through the skylight... Is... As I've drawn here. That's right, my lord. As you can see, the seat opposite the one of which the victim and his attacker were sitting is obscured from view. In other words, if someone had been sitting on that seat, it's quite possible that these witnesses could have. Wait, what? Could have been completely unaware of it. What, what is it now, Von Zykes? It's quite possible some phantom was sitting there. You Nipponese have a forbidding... Uh, forbidding? Forbidding what? Forbidding habit of obscuring the truth with ambiguity. Am, ambi ambigu... I'm gonna kill myself. Ambiguity... Biggity biggity bang. I concur with the prosecution's rejoinder. Rejoin what the fuck are these words? <laughs> In a British court of law, evidence is paramount. I cannot entertain this conjecture, Consul. That is, unless you're able to put a name to the mysterious passenger to whom you allude. Can you, Mr. Narahoto? I'll try my best, damn it. I honestly don't know. Who could it have been? Who could have been in the other seat that was out of sight? the witnesses I have an inkling I don't fucking know what what can I have a court record please who could have been sitting on the inside makes no damn sense Can I look at the foot? Hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. Court record. Give me a second. I need to check something. All right. Let me inside. We've been through this already, Mikotoba. All right. Okay. Victim sit here. I was told there was someone sitting next to him. I'm going to assume it's Mr. McGill that was sitting next to him. So who the fuck would be over here? And also, they would be on the side. Right, there's a nice little hidey hole. Uh, all sorts of equipment. 
Feeding tubes. Storage compartment. Could it be someone on the jury? I mean, it couldn't have been Mr. McGilded, because he would be sitting next to him. You two were up top. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why fucking Strongheart's here. <laughs> he has nothing to do with the case, but he's here for some reason. Maybe he does. I got no idea, man. <laughs> I have literally no idea. But as a proud citizen of the Japanese Empire, you will look to the sky and walk on, making sure all sides are- wait, what? To the sky and walk on, making sure all sides of tears are gone. Go on. This isn't just a case of going on, Mrs. Sato. Alright then, damn, I'll go on, fuck. The defense would like to put forward a name. You got a new glass? When did you get a new glass? I thought you broke the other one. You are a fool. The response was a desperate attempt by a man who has no notion of his own limitations. A toast to hard lessons not yet learned. I'm gonna show you something hard, all right. <laughs> Let us not delay, counsel. The defense is still to name the passenger in the other seat. This could be it. This could be the chance I've been waiting in turn. Wait a minute. I'm trying, like, I'm sorry. In my mind, I'm like, what if it was strong hurt? I highly doubt it would be, but, you know, maybe that's why he sent me to defend him, because he knows that he's innocent. On that night, on the night of the murder, the person occupying the seat in the omnibus captain that was obscured from view. What the fuck? I, I, I don't know. Oh. An apprentice miller who witnessed the accident from the roof. Fair play. I don't. How? It was Mason. It was actually the victim. <laughs> I highly doubt that. Yes, concealed in the blind spot of the cabin and I is none other than this unexpected passenger. Yeah, I know. I have no idea where the fuck they're going with this. They just fucking went... They just went, hey, you know who it is. It's like, my guy, I haven't played this game in like a week. You expect me to fucking know this shit right off the bat? I mean... Attaches to the Fendom. Yeah, I know, damn it. I just... You know, usually I would have some sort of theory by now, but I don't. I just don't. I, I never. I wasn't thinking about who could it possibly be, right? You got two people who were up top. Well, three technically. You got the two inside. We heard that there's a total of five people there. Tell me, there's a sixth person there that no one knew about, and if no one knew about it, how the fuck would I know the person? The witness wasn't looking at Mr. McGilded at all. Meaning, he would have been sitting somewhere else. Sorry, I was sitting there ranting. <laughs> I was sitting there ranting for a second. Alright, hold up. What the fuck did you just say? Alright. Uh, our task is defend him. And we're gonna assumptions. We're working on assumptions that he's innocent of the crime. Yes, that must mean that there was someone else inside the omnibus with Mr. McGilded. Uh... The true, cul uh, the true culprit. That's right, exactly where I've been. Oh, of course. So two people are sitting inside the cabin. The witness saw through the skylight that night. Or the victim and the real culprit. Oh, wait. What? Wait, so now we're saying that the... I thought we were working on the assumption that the... That the culprit was sitting across from him. So now we're working on the assumption that the culprit was sitting next to him? Okay. Well, if you told me that from the beginning, I would have I would have just 
said McGilded. Yeah. That makes perfect sense when you're working on that assumption. You fucking... You should have said that. The passenger in the enclosed cabin and the witness on the roof deck failed to see. Has to have been Mr. Magnus McGilded. Mick. Mr. McGilded? Because I was working on the assumption. I was going by the photo. I was going by the photo, right, that the guy stabbed him in front of him. And I was just going with the assumption that they were fucking lying through their teeth where they're like, yeah, they, he was sitting next to him. It's like, all right. But I guess the dude sitting next to him just like fucking swung his arm around. What are you talking about, counsel? That's the name of the defendant. Objection. See, even the judge don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. What the hell? You could have killed us all right there. That's very flammable. I bet you guys will lock this guy up. All right. If I dis, if I um, discredit this, discredit, discredit, fucking word. Ah, I don't need, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna give up. <laughs> this chamber by smashing my hollow chalice. Do forgive the discourtesy. Desecrated, by the way. That's the word. Lord von Zykes. People talk of those tiny island nations in the far east as having a learning and cultural... Wait, what? Having a learning and culture of their own. As having a learning and culture of their own. Does that make sense? But I see... The <laughs> but that feels weird. That's weird to say. But I see they use the term ill-advisedly. What are you trying to say? Let me explain in terms that even a student of an alert, of alertless blackwater... Blackwater, Blackwater, wow. Backwater, <laughs> such as yourself might understand. When the bloody scene unfolded, the victim and his assailant were sitting side by side. Multiple witnesses have attested to that fact. It is the very premise on which this case is built. Objection. Really? I thought we were building the... See that? See that? Damn it. That's what confused me. I thought we were building it that... The culprit was sitting, you know, in front of him. <laughs> you guys were working on one assumption, I was working on the other. Shit. But that premise may be wrong. What? If the victim really was sitting beside Mr. McGilded, so basically I fucked myself over because I was one step ahead of these bastards. It creates an inconsistency that can be that can't be reconciled in any way. What inconsistencies, counsel? The defendant's glove, my lord. Both witnesses made the same testimony. They claimed that there was blood on both hands of the person sitting next to the victim. Objection. Yet we know the truth to be otherwise. Only one glove bears the glory remains. Objection. The point is, even in the face of this irrefutable evidence, both witnesses have maintained their stance. Yes, their testimonies remain unchanged. Exactly. They both adamantly swear that they clearly remember seeing blood on both hands of the assailant. In short, their memory of events is correct, and their testimony reveals the truth. It was somebody else sitting besides the victim that night, a third party we have yet to identify. And the victim's blood was on the passenger's hands, both of them. Objection. And who was this third party? I don't fucking know. Obviously, the true culprit. Extraordinary. Order. What exactly are you po pos postulating? Fuck, god damn it, words. Postulating. Objection. When's the last time you used the word postulate and I'm gonna have to head up to whoever put that there in that fucking sentence and just smack some sense into them. The defendant's pop oh, fuck. postulation is just that, nothing more than conjecture. Why don't people talk like this in court anymore? This I would fuck, I would walk into a courthouse and watch a fucking case go down right there, people talk like this. The witness have clearly stated that they saw the accused. 
but when elaborating on his testimony, Mr. Fairplay said the two of them were wearing hats and I couldn't exactly make out their faces. Yes. The top of their heads were obscured by the roof. I could see the rest of them though. Yes, that's right. Both gents were most certainly hatted. Hatters do tend to notice such things. You're fucking... Says the guy with the fucking hat falling apart. <laughs> and what peculiar styles of hat did the two gentlemen sport... Fuck. The two gentlemen sport Mr. Froust. Top hats? I'm afraid I don't remember. How do you not remember? That you call yourself a hatter. Well, you're as mad as a hatter. The styles of the hat makes no difference. There was no third passenger in that cabin. How can you be sure? Because if there had been, the accused Mr. McGilded would undoubtedly have offered to dispose the fact. Unless, that is, you are proposing an even more prepos uh, preposterous explanation. Fucking big words. My English teacher would be proud of me. That the accused failed even... Um, I mean, let's face it, most fucking people nowadays can't even read it above a fucking second grade level, so anybody would be proud of me at this point. <laughs> that the accused failed even to notice the presence of the true culprit in, in the very cabin in which he traveled. He's right. If there was another person traveling in the enclosed cabin of the Omnibus, oh my fucking god. I don't know what the hell just happened to me, but as the camera was rotating, I just got a little fucking motion sickness right there. What the hell? It's inconceivable that Mr. McGilded would have been unaware of it. Maybe he was asleep. Or da. There is certainly a simple solution to this problem. Bringing the accused Mr. McGilded to the stand. Well, what do you say, counsel? The the prosec eh, fuck. The prosecution objects, my lord. On what grounds? As a suspect, he will fuck. As a suspect, he will already made a full statement to the police. But what if there's some reason he was unable to speak freely? Magnus Miss Gilded is no uneducated ruffian. Raffian? Ruffian. Rowdy rough boys. <laughs> if it indeed turns out that a man has been withholding information, you can be sure it will have been a most deliberate act. Hmm. Counsel for the defense, what is your opinion? My lord? Should we ask Miss McGill to testify or not? Bring his ass to the stand. Yes, we need to hear what he has said, what he has to say in order to find out the truth. Bring that ass over here, your honor. The defense would like to call Mr. McGilda to the stand. Hmm. In that case, I would like to hear the opinion of the jury. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I need a little time to consider this. Oh, fuck you. If you ask me, I think we should- Thank you! I knew I could trust you. I can trust you, and I can trust Nana Putin. Get the man out here. I said he's gonna kill him. It would be utterly illogical not to hear his testimony. Well, there you go. Three to three to fucking, like, three to what, two? The other guy's undecided? All right, well, majority rules already. If something needs doing, get it done. That's how you run things at a guild. Hearing what the patron of my favorite little park has to say. Oh, yes. That would be lovely. Yes, the jury says the man must be heard. Very well. The court will hear the defendant's testimony. Bailiff, show the defendant to the stand at once. Now, maybe what actually happened that night will finally become clear. Bring that ass here. Let proceedings be resumed. Mr. McGilded. Have you been listening to the discourse of the day? He's the most shadiest looking fucking guy ever. So shady that he got no neck. Unbelievable. <laughs> My
most unlikable dude right here. Just looking at him. To be sure, I have, my lord. There are now two matters of which the court desires to hear from you. The first is whether or not you were a third party. Well, if you were a third party. Whether or not there was a third party with you in the omnibus cabin as proposed by the defense. The second is that if such a person was indeed present, why did you conceal that fact from the police? Why are you out here lying? Oh, Baggett, no. Ba uh, Baggett? What? <laughs> Tis not my nature to hide anything at all. Just answer the question, please. The truth of the matter is, I've been desperate about this. Wait, what? Desperate? Yeah, that's the word. I've been desperate about this all along. Des am I saying that right? Fuck, am I? I'm having a moment, aren't I? That doesn't feel right. Do I tell yous all, or keep my mouth shut? Tell us what? The fine fellow representing me is absolutely right. In the carriage on the night, with myself and the other man, there was another passenger. It's true. Aye, and twas me who helped the little urchin get away after it all happened. You? What? Oh, you're just digging a hole. You Oompa Loompa looking motherfucker. No, Magnet Miss Gilded. The convenient excuse can't save you now. I'm truly sorry I am, Lord Von Zykes. I'm sure you'd be waiting to know why I was nothing. Wait, what? Why I said nothing? Why I was nothing? Why I said nothing when I was talking to the police? I do be having a very good reason, I assure you. Which is? Well, the little child was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and not in any way involved, you see. Child? What? If the police had known the wee one was there, I have assured she'd done it. Uh, I have assured? What the fuck? Why am I? What the hell? Am I having a stroke? They have assured she'd done it. They have haunt. They have haunted. Halt. They have hauled her into the <laughs> into this here courtroom like myself. I was only trying to spare her that. Use hearts and young minds are easily damaged, my lord. Use hearts, young hearts and minds. Fuck! What the hell is wrong with me? And who was this young child of whom you speak? That I don't know. You don't know. Aye, well, the wee thing just happened to be in the carriage that night. I never saw her before or since. Objection. We have absolutely no reason to believe this man. The prosecution calls for the witness statements to be disregarded by the court. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if the urchin isn't here in the courtroom as we speak, listening to the proceedings. What? Oh! Oh my god! Oh! It's no use! I can't see anything! What's going on? Be careful, Mr. Nahoto. Cover your face! Bailiff, don't let the accused escape. Secure the omnibus. Oh. Oh no! <laughs> Here I call an emergency recess. Bailiff, ensure the defendant is in custody. Here in the courtroom. Oh shit! What happened? <laughs> we were hurriedly removed from the smoke-filled courtroom by the bailiff. We missed scenes of chaos as people stumbled over one another in their desperation to flee the chamber. We had no idea. In moments like this, everyone's like, maybe we shouldn't be playing with fire in our fucking courtrooms. Maybe we shouldn't be throwing alcohol into the fire. I don't know. It's just it's crazy. I had no idea what was happening. All we knew was that, for the time being at least, the travel... The travel? trial was suspended to be continued oh shit honestly I thought somebody shot the defense I really did you heard bang and I was like no <laughs> damn shit popping off eighteenth of February 12.52 p.m. The Old Bailey Defense. Antechamber. What the fuck just happened in there? Mr. Narahodo, 
and managed to find a Narahodo. Ugh. Narahodo. That's a weird name. It's fun to say though. I managed to find out what happened. Mississauga. I was told there was an advanced form of smoke grenade, a type of exploding device that releases smoke. A smoke grenade? Sounds like the sort of thing ninjas use. We're just making sure everything is safe now. I think the trial will start again before long. But, who would have done such a thing like that? The police managed to catch someone who was trying to flee the courtroom, apparently. Flee the courtroom? Why? Out of everyone who was trying to leave the courtroom, they managed to catch one person in particular. Okay. Well, it's a young girl of around 15, I hear. A young girl? Then could it be the other passenger that... Why are we dealing with 15-year-olds in this game? Why are there so many 15-year-olds? What the fuck? <laughs> wasn't the wasn't the girl in the fucking in the prologue 15? Am I bugging? And then in the first and in the case on the fucking on the boat, the runaway was 15, and now we're dealing with another 15-year-old. Jesus, Mikoto was 16. Can we get some adults in here? <laughs> Before I get locked up. Oh man. The other passenger that Mr. McGilday was just talking about. My thoughts exactly. How lucky. So he wasn't lying. Oh. What's well, become Mr. McGilded actually. There's so many things I need to ask about him. But he's not here. I think he was summoned to the prosecutor's. Uh, pro prosecutor's? Why did I say it like that? Prosecutor's antechamber to question. To answer. Fuck. To question question Joe. To answer questions. Along with the young girl. Who is she, I wonder? And was it and what was it she was doing there at the trial? She was taking a huge risk, and for what possible benefit to herself? There's another matter that's troubling me. What's that? The twenty pence. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, how the fuck she get in there without paying? According to the coachman, Mr. Beepo. Beepo. He took four passengers that night, fair five pence each. That comes to a total of 20 pences, exactly. But now it seems that there was in fact five passengers, which means the figures don't seem to add up at all. Well, she was probably hiding inside the fucking thing. Let's see, I mean, once we get a look at her and we see how tall she is, she was probably hiding inside the fucking, you know, inside the seat. Counsel for the defense, kindly proceed to the courtroom. The trial will recommence in five minutes. Well, thank you, officer. We'll go straight away. Well, whoever she is, I imagine this young girl will be asked to take the stand and testify now. I really can't imagine what she's going to say, but it could alter the whole direction of this trial. We'll know soon enough, Mrs. Sato. Yeah. Of course we will. We have to. My ear's starting to hurt. <laughs> Move my headphones a little bit. Oh, now they're both on the stand. Alright, out here JoJo posing, I see. Alright, I see you. There's the young girl next to Miss McGilded. She must have been the one who caused the disturbance before. Got a sweet ass hat. Well, after the rather eventful reset, the course will now resume the trial of Mr. Magnus McGilbert. Now then, Lord Von Zykes. Or Von Zoinks, my lord. I believe you have established the cause of the smoke which which veiled the proceedings earlier. Valet or veiled or whatever the fuck he said, I don't fucking know. It seems to have been an advanced form of smoke grenade of sorts. Where the fuck did she get that? Good gracious, the army! What in the devil's name? It was an elaborate attempt by the young girl to cloak her escape from the public gallery. But she was caught. Caught fucking slipping. I'm slipping. I'm falling. I can't get up. <laughs> and now occupant and now occupies the stand. Hmm. Your name, girl? Are you responsible for the smoke grenade which induced such pandemonium here in the courtroom? 
Listen, either you answer now or you get locked up. Your choice. What's the meaning of this elaborate behavior? De deplorable beha- fuck, uh, deplorable. That was the word, elaborate, what the fuck's wrong with me? If I may, my lord. Yes, Mr. McGildit. Think perhaps I ought to explain here. Is she death? Why is it that the wee lad's here in the first place, and why she tried to bolt like that? It's all tied up with the events of that night, so it is. Hmm. Very well. Mr. McGilded, give your testimony. I don't care who gives their testimony. Someone better start fucking explaining right now, or I'm gonna lose my goddamn mind. You will explain to the court how... Explain to the court exactly how this young woman is involved in this case. Just what happened that night? It's not like the defense lawyer needs that information or anything. I mean, it's your fucking no neck on the line. The young girl. On the night in question, I took back, I took the back seat in the omnibus and promptly nodded off. So you went to sleep, like I said. Okay. Then bag, then bagar, bagar. Oh, fuck! What the fuck, man? <laughs> a loud thud and we scream. A wee scream woke me up in the fair. In the fair, what? There was a fellow collapsed on the floor at my feet, so I sat him up on the seat across from me. Then I turned to find out where the scream had come from, and bless my soul, what did I find? There was a child in there, all curled up in a ball, hiding her wee face. Her wee face. Her wee self. Why did I say face? I said face because that's what she's doing right now, and it's bothering me. <laughs> I remain somewhat baffled, I confess, but from what I gather on the night in question, this young girl was indeed riding in the omnibus, is that correct? That's exactly as the defense counsel says. This last was the fifth uh, was the fifth passenger, my lord. Fuck. I'm getting all tongue twisted. Very well. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. Are you ready, counsel? Yes, my lord. I'm ready to rot. Or rather, no. I have no idea where to start. How the fuck do I cross-examine my own defense? Took the back seat of the omnibus, promptly nodded off. Loud thud. It woke me up. Fellow collapsed on the floor at my feet. I sat him up across from me. Hold it. You sat him up? The victim, you mean. That I did. On the seat across from me, as I said, I could plainly see the poor devil was already gone. And you wouldn't leave a dead man just lying on the floor now, would you? Depends. It's just common courtesy, so it is. The fuck? You bootleg-ass JoJo pose. Okay. I find it a little hard to believe. Oh, Lord Von Zykes. Now why would that be? You, you wait to find a man lying dead at your feet in a carriage. Any normal person would what hailed the cabman. An upstanding member of London society, that is. Well now, as you know, I'm in something of a special line of business. The business of lending money at extraordinary rates of interest. Unfortunately, my lord, not everyone is... Not everyone is thankful for... <clears throat> I need to drink a fucking water. My voice is getting a little fucking like raspy there. What the hell? <coughs> Jesus. All right. <clears throat> Unfortunately, my lord, not everyone is thankful for the help I offer them, and some would see, won't, well, some would even see me dead. So I try, where as possible, to avoid getting myself into a tangle with trouble. Are you suggesting that you were gonna leave the man there? Heavens, alive? No. I was always intending to report it, so I was. Only I had a mind to find out that wh uh, whys and where- fuck. Find out the whys and wherefores first. The whys and wherefores. Right you are. There were some details I wanted to understand before anyone else got into meddling. That wee scream I heard, for example. 
when it your when it your good self just do the same fuck yes the scream he said he heard at the same time as the thud then I turned to find out the scream was coming from what's the soul what did I thought this child curled up in a ball I had to yawn you said she was hiding herself Aye, that's right. It was hard to find the dim, uh, it's hard to find in the dim lamplight, but she was all curled up in a wee ball. But when our eyes met, my heart nearly stopped beating in my chest. You're really overreacting, miss. Overreacting, overacting, miss. Still, and, uh, still and all, I pulled her from under there and sat her on the seat opposite so I could have a wee chatting with her. The seat opposite. That's right. Just next to the dead gentleman there. What? You told her to sit next to the dead body? You sat the young girl next to a corpse? Well, as I'm sure I mentioned, a gentleman in my position can, can all too often find himself in moral danger. So... I needed to find out just who this urchin was, you see. Hmm. And while I was in the middle of talking with her, another scream, a fellow's voice this time. Presumably the scream of Mr. Frost, who was sitting on the roof deck seats. Right you are again, I would say, sir. Looking down through the skylight, he must have seen this young girl and the gentleman with the knife in his belly. In other words, the previous witnesses did not did not, in fact, see you at all, Mr. McGilbert. What they believed to be yourself, the victim, was in fact, well, the self and the victim, was in fact this girl and the late Mr. Mason. Aye, my lord. I was, uh, I was at a thing, wait, what? I was at a, I was at a tink. Everyone understands now. I'm, I'm sorry, what? I was... What the fuck are you saying to me? <laughs> I was, as I think everyone understands now, sat at the back of the car... Okay, why you gotta say it like that? Giving me a fucking stroke. Certainly plausible. The defendant is somewhat diminutive in stature. D dim diminutive? That... Okay, whatever. And readily confused, perhaps, with this young girl. After that, of course... With the screams from the gentleman over us, the driver realized something was wrong and pulled up the horse. I do wonder how you must be feeling, Mr. Narahodo. Being a defendant's lawyer and yet finding myself as stunned as everyone else in his testimony. Let's just say it's trying. We certainly had precious little time to talk to Mr. McGilded before the trial. But we mustn't be dispirited must just try and learn all the facts we can. When we arrived in London this morning, I didn't see my day planning out like this. Mr. Narahoda, no grumbling, even in your head. Okay, Mom. How do you know? Women's intuition always get me in trouble. Alright. So I guess I'm just gonna have to fucking press everything. When you first got into the omnibus, were there any passengers? Were there any passengers already on board? There were not. The cabin was empty, and there was no one on the roof deck either. You were the first passenger. Aye, that's why I took it back, at the backside, and I did. Uh, tis the most comfortable, so. Did you explain exactly what you mean by the back seat? By all means, it's how I already described it earlier. I'm talking about the seat opposite to the one in which the poor gentleman who was stabbed was sitting. Like I said, this is the most comfortable and where I felt most at ease. And of course, I enjoyed gazing through the skylight from time to time as well. Then a loud thud scream woke me up. A loud thud, you say? And a scream? Aye, that's right. How can I explain it? It was like the sound of someone falling to the ground. That sort of noise. 
So you think it was the sound of Mr. Mason falling to the ground after being stabbed? Well, now you'll remember I was asleep at the time, so I wouldn't say like that. And when the sound woke me up, I opened my eyes. There wasn't a soul to have been in the carriage, but fell on the floor. I'm sorry, what? There wasn't a soul to be seen in the carriage, but the friend. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you didn't see anyone. But at the same moment, you heard a scream. Ah, from the seats above, you on the roof deck, I presume? Not above me, no, my lord. So it's from inside the cabin. But I wasn't altogether thinking about the scream. No. I was too stunned and by the desperate sight before in my eyes. There was a fellow collapsed on the floor at my feet, so I sat him up. Uh-huh, we did that. Turned and found the scream I come from, and bless my soul, what did I find? I'm afraid I don't understand. I'm sure you told the court at the court. God damn it. I'm sorry you mm. I'm sure you told the court that there was no one else in the carriage except yourself and the victim. Now that I got that out of my fucking mouth hole, let's continue. So I did, sir, so I did. As far as I could see, that is. What do you mean by that? Well, now, it's a queer thing. Can I use that word anymore? <laughs> the wee scream I heard uh, as I woke up. It came from, if you'll excuse the vulgar expression, under my backside. Under your backside? Yeah. It's like this testimony just came from right out of from right out of my ass. When I lifted the seat on which I've been sitting, I found there was a wee cubby hole there for storage. This is not a hole though. We can examine the omnibus ourselves. Remember? Yeah, of course. The whole. I mean, I did that already. So yeah, I I already knew what the hell he was talking about. This would be a very good time to have a thorough look around inside. I did it already, and that's when I found her. Thank you, I've heard enough. The events, as explained, are clear in my mind. However, at least one conundrum remains. Who the hell is that? Her name is Gina, Lund Gina Lestrade. My lord. Lestrade. As in like... As in like... Officer Lestrade? From, like, Sherlock Holmes? She's a... She's a changer. Earns her crust among living... Wait, what? Not a changer. What am I saying? A, a chancer. Chancer? That's the word? Yeah? Chancer? What's wrong with me? Earns her crust among crowds, reliving people's... Uh, relieving people's of their purses. Oh, so she's a fucking... Yeah, okay. She's a pickpocket. Yeah, <laughs> you could have just said that. What? This girl here, a petty thief. Well, now she's not just a thief. She's a thief and a moiterer. Order! Is this true, Miss Lestrade? Miss Lestrade, you will answer the question, or you will be put on Santa's naughty list. Oh! <laughs> what? what the fuck just happened? How dare you? What's the meaning of this? How? She throws a smoke grenade, you guys catch her, and don't confiscate the fucking gun? Oh my god. The girl, she's gone. Open your eyes. I'm over here. What the fuck? Good gracious, how? What was the point of the little sidestep? I know what you're thinking. Grown-ups are all the same. This dirty little dipper, you say, slipped up and got caught on the job. She got herself back into a corner, so she knifed the gent. Go on. That's what... God. <laughs> These fucking accents are gonna be the death of me. Go on, that's what your heads are saying, eh? Nope, not at all. This is the court of law. We're here to determine the truth. Ah. Why'd you gotta be like this? Look. 
Knives are for cowards. Only thugs use weapons like that. All I need for what I do is these fingers. I'm a professional, alright? Maybe not in your eyes, but I got pride of what I do. I've got pride of what I do, yes sir, I do. Let me guess, you don't count smoke guns among weapons for thugs. Oh, this gun that they didn't fucking confiscate? Yeah. <laughs> this was in the bag I lifted the other day, down where they kept the four-wheel dra drags? What? What? Oh, she's saying that was- wait, is she saying that was found in the fucking carriage? Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? I like the pink best. I do like the pink one, too. Do not wear that thing in my direction again. So, you admit that you were riding the omnibus on the night in question. It's all right, lass. You can tell them the truth now. All right. It's just as like the Irishman says. The court accepts the girl's Miss Gina Lestrade as a valid and significant witness in this case. Accordingly, young lady, you will now. We will now hear your testimony, if you please. You will tell the court exactly what happened in the omnibus on the night in question. All right, if I have to. Oh, you have to, all right. Crikey. <laughs> She's not even fucking, not even Australian. So I snuck inside the carriage before they, before they hooked up, hooked up the horses, just like always. But it was a right old waste of time. I got nothing to show for me troubles. I tell you. You can see a blind thing in the hidden place. It's pitching there. Then after a while, I hear a sound. I hear a loud bang. Nearly jumped out my skin. I did, and the scream just came out. It's because of that, this swell found me. He did help me get away. All right. Yes, he let you go. I fail to understand why you wouldn't let the street urchin go, Mr. McGilded. Oh, to simply itself, my lord. Uh, to sim- to simplify- oh, fuck. To simp- simplicity itself, my lord. You see, she couldn't possibly have killed the other passenger. I knew that for a fact. How? As I said- as I- oh, fuck. As I am sure I said before. Well, you fell asleep and you were sitting on top of her the whole time, so there really wouldn't have been no way for her to stab him without you noticing, right? I was sitting right on top of the place where she was hiding. I think a demonstration is called for. No, not really. I got it. I got it. This is where I was sitting that night. In the cubbyhole of which you have spoken. It's underneath the seat, I presume. Hmm, yes. It did appear just it did appear just large enough to accommodate some someone of the girl's stature. Aye. But of course, the wee lass was stuck in there. Because I parked myself on the seat for the duration. Ah. So you see, that's why uh, that's why I let out uh, that's why I let the lass out. I knew that if the police found her there, they automatically assumed she'd done it. But I couldn't live with myself if a young life was ruined when all I, when all the time I knew she was innocent. Even though you must have, even though you must have realized your actions would result in your own innocence being called into question. Not at all, my lord. Not at all. Hmm? I knew in my own heart that I was innocent. So I thought. It was worth taking a punt in my own good name for the sake of the less fortunate. My goodness. What a perfect gentleman. My lord. This is a fine example of a man that cannot possibly be guilty of a heinous crime like this. I'm ashamed of myself for ever doubting you, sir. Yeah! Yeah! 
With calm, calculated reasoning, one arrives clearly in the truth every time. In the truth, at the truth every time. Haha! How are you gonna fuck this up for me, Bonsikes? Saints alive. All six members of the jury. All six members of the jury. Uh, fuck, I can't read. All six members of the jury consensually in their leaning of the verdict of non guilty. How are you gonna fuck this up for me, Zykes? Is it not a hoda? This. Well, it must mean. It must mean what? That we are victorious! We've won? Are you sure? Objection. I knew it. What the fuck are you doing? If the side of my iron heel Wellington offers Ooh, Wellington, yes. Offers prey, do forgive me. Do forgive the discourtesy. This really is a this really is a consummate example of the one monumental flaw in British judicial practices. Where evidence and dude, he's just like I'm I'm sorry, it's not even that he's like sitting, he's just standing up with one foot on the fucking on on the desk. What are you doing? Where evidence and reasoning could be paramount, emotion rules the day. Emotion? The witness latest statement gives us a clear insight into his true nature. What do you mean his true nature? Do you really think Scotland Yard would have made such a glaring omission? After the incident, the omnibus was was com compre fuck. comprehensively searched by officers of the police. Obviously, the interior of this cubby hole as the witness put, was included in the investigation. The compartment under the posterior seat was full of the coachman's belongings. It noted in black and white here in the police reports. Good lord. Well, yeah, see, listen. I was gonna let that rock, honestly, because I noticed it too, because I looked in it earlier and we saw all the shit in there, and now it's all gone? But I was just gonna shut my fucking mouth, but now you're gonna... Damn it! The evidence has been tampered with. In order to collaborate Mr. McGill the story, someone has unlawfully removed everything from under the seat. That's right. That's right. He is right. Order, order. How could such a devious con contrivancy... <coughs> Fuck. How could a devious contrivance possibly have been affected, Council? Naturally, we must have acknowledged the defense of uh, the defiant fuck. Words. Naturally, I just hit my fucking microphone. God damn it. Naturally, we must have acknowledged the deficiencies of the const uh, the constabulary fuck. Constabulary and the and allowing of this to have happened. I need a dictionary with me. However, I assure you, when the omnibus was wheeled into the courtroom this morning, the compartment under the seat was not empty. Well, yeah, I can... I can testify to that. Well, my Nipponese friend? Me? When the carriage was submitted as evidence, doubtlessly you examined it fine detail, as would any self-respecting practitioner of law, you got me there. Mm, you're getting me to side with you by flattering me. Okay. It's working. Pray, what did you find in the condition of the undersea compartment to be? It was full. Oh, to be sure, the young gentleman will be able to clear this up in a jeffy. Sorry. Go ahead. Tell the court now. Now, this is all an elaborate excuse by the desperate Lord Von Zykes. Oh. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Well, counsel, do you have something to say for this matter? Oh. Oh. Oh, oh no. How am I supposed to answer that? What can I say about the state of the little compartment under the seat? 
I didn't look, but I did. <laughs> that would be a lie. Oh, why you gotta be like this, man? You know what? You know what? With everything on the line, Cosma, I believe in you. I really don't know if giving this answer is helping my cause with the Council for Defense. But, as far as I remember at least, when I first examined the compartment, I'm fairly certain there were a number of articles inside it. Yes. Are you sure, Council? What be this? What are you saying now, you daft doll? What? Daft doll? I don't know what that means. I thought you were on my side. I'm on the side of justice. I can't lie while I'm carrying the soul of my friend, okay? He's right here next to me and he's gonna fucking kick my ass in heaven when I get there. What game are you playing at? Your task is to defend the man in the stand. My task is to get to the fucking truth. You don't tell me what my task is, okay? Why would you say something to compromise his position? My man, my fucking friend died for me to be here today. I'm not gonna dishonor that. As to advocate for the defense in this trial, I confess I'm still not entirely sure where I stand. But it seems to me that I should state what fa I should state what facts I do know as clearly and honestly as possible. Interesting. It's not a long pleasing. Uh, all along? Why did I say that? Altogether pleasing, fella. I'm simply telling the truth, Mr. McGilded. Well, don't forget yeah, you're supposed to be representing my best interests here, lad. Now then. A fellow's memory is a curious thing, and not altogether reliable. No, the court must consider the facts. That there's... That there... Uh, fuck. That there... there uh, fuck! That there... Mmm! That there cubbyhole under... That there cubbyhole under the seat. I feel... <laughs> Damn it! I feel so weird saying it! That there cubby hole under the seat is as empty as the devil's heart, so it is. Cause I want you know what you know what God, I can't even speak no more. <laughs> you wanna know why I started so hard on that? It's because I wanted to say that twice, right? Because it feels more natural to me, but that's not how you do it, right? That that there. I wanted to say that, but that's not what it said, so I kept stuttering. <laughs> Do you think perhaps it would have been in your best interest not to admit that you might have been mistaken? Why do I feel like something's not right here? Hmm. I should like the jury to weigh in on the matter, I think. So, hey, I just want to point out, I love how when when everyone was leaning towards guilty, we automatically went to fucking, all right, let's hand down the verdict. But now that it's all towards innocent, y'all want to question fucking everything, okay. The compartment is designed to house equipment used to maintain the smooth running of the carriage. The guild's rule states that the omnibus should be properly and fully equipped at all times. So, it certainly wouldn't have been empty on the night of the in question. Beepo isn't that irresponsible. The money lending f uh, fl uh, fl fleecer, God damn it! The money lending fleecer and the pig purse are lying. Liars, all of them. I can't believe I was nearly taken in. The stinking rich are always stinking. Nothing but cowards, the lot of them. What? Oh no! It's a trick. Of course, it's a trick. And I've got a treat. For the guilty. Quite so. I must concur here. Alright, okay, that's it. That, that's it, guys. That's it. That's all we got. No more. 
With calm, calculated reasoning, one's arrive, one's arrives clearly at the truth every time. Yes, but every time a different truth, it seems. My lord, I humbly exhibit the scales of justice. Clearly, a verdict of not guilty at this time would be wholly inappropriate. Well, wholly? Why did I say that? Wholly inappropriate. Thank you, counsel. But before we proceed any further, there's a matter of the astounding cross-examination. Counsel, for the defense, begin your questioning of the witness, please. Yes, my lord. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> the whole balance of the trial just shifted. Almost beyond recognition. The Reaper of the Bailey. Of the Bailey? Of the Bailey. Is that works, it would seem. Yeah, but he wouldn't have made it this far without my help, you piece of shit. Don't forget that. Alright. What the girl saw. Snuck inside the carriage. Mm-hmm. But it was old... It was a waste of time. Not a show for my troubles. I tell you, it was blind. Couldn't see anything. There was pitch in there. After a while, I heard a loud bang. Nearly jumped out of my skin. Hold it! Elaborate, please. What are you saying? A loud bang? What do you mean? Noise of someone falling on the floor? Or was it the noise of you fucking around with that gun? Could have been, I suppose. I don't remember so well. Point is, it made me jump. And you let out a scream, involuntarily. That's right. And then I felt the cushion over my head get lighter all of a sudden. Presumably when the defendant got up in order to help the victim. Or not. I could equally have been the moment the accused stood in order to stab his victim, could it have not? Well, girl, did you see what happened? Yeah, I saw it. I pushed up the curtain and add a quick butch- uh, what? I pushed up the curtain and add a quick but butcher's while I had the chance I did. Irish man was sitting up- was sitting up the bloke. What in- oh fuck, what the fuck? The Irishman was sitting up the bloke, what had fallen on the floor. Okay. Yeah. Matches his account, of course. But then the fellow suddenly turned around and looked right at me. I sucked back down again, but it was too late. I never risked looking. Alright. Because of that swell found me. Helped you out. How'd he help you out? How'd you get out? When Mr. Miguel to discover you, he pulled you out from the hiding place. <sighs> I was scared stiff, I was. He dragged me out of the seat. Down in the seat. Uh, down. Wait, what? He dragged me out of. and sat me down on the seat. Alright. Next to the victim. Yeah? Bloke had a knife in his guts. He was still bleeding. Then the carriage lurched a bit and ended up falling onto me. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> that's not good. Both my hands got covered in blood. I felt sick as a dog. Both their hands covered in blood. Must have been what the roof the rooftop passenger saw. After that, I believe you talked with Miss McGilded for a while? Is that correct? You asked me some stuff. Wanted to know my name and whatnot. I was up to it and what I was up to. Then I heard something above, and someone screamed. Yes, Mr. Faust, on the roof. Well, I did... I did... God. Well, I didn't want him seeing my face, so I didn't look up. Then the horse was drawn... Was drawn up smit... Smartish? Smart... What the fuck? Smartish, and this here Irishman said to me, Get back under the seat. I'll see that you get away later. All six members decided the defendant was innocent for a brief shining moment. All right, I got it, Sasato.
I know you're trying to help me out, but I got this. Something's bothering me. Just can't quite put my finger on it. Stung to the carriage and sign before I looked up. Hmm. Waste of time, got nothing to show for my troubles that night. Tell you, I can't see anything in a hiding place. It's pitching there. Hold it! So you couldn't see out into the cabin at all. Not a jot. Not a jot. Most days I push the cushion up, uh, up with my head and look out the crack. Then I can have a butcher. A butcher? God, what the fuck? Butchers. I gotta have a butchers at, at who I'm gonna fiddle. I don't wanna hear I don't wanna hear you talking about fiddling anybody, okay? <laughs> I thought you were a pickpocket, not a butcher. I mean, I have a look. See see that I'm under ain't as ain't as plush as the other one. So most of the time the passengers plant themselves opposite. But for some reason that night. This Irish man spent the whole journey right over my head. And for that reason, you weren't able to push the cushion, uh, the cushion out to speak. I got, I'm, I'm losing my mind. Truth is, I ain't too happy this small, dark places. It feels too much like being thrown in the clink. What? Hello? Excuse me. What, what are you doing? Is something wrong, Mr. McGilded? Were you thrown in the clink before? I do apologize, but there's something in the matter, Council. I was just wondering if Miss Lestrade's last comment made something occur uh made something occur to you, perhaps. You seem to be thinking something to yourself. Oh, no no. It was nothing important. I seem it seem unimportant. I was feeling bad for the poor lass is all. I remember feeling desperate myself as a young lad. Shut up in the dark was terrifying, so it was. I see. Yes. I'm sure we can all sympathize. I'm still scared of the dark now. Yeah. And I don't know about yourself. But I find that the darkness seems to be uh, seems to make everything you hear seem a lot louder as you as well. Yeah. I suppose it does. Maybe. Miss Lestrade? Did you hear something that night? Anything? An unusual noise, perhaps? Nah, not really. All I could hear was the Irishman snoring. The jabbers! There's no need to tell the whole world of, of my foibles, you little scamp. What a pity. Only Miss Lestrade had heard something and might have given us a vital clue. Yeah. What should we make of the last statement of hers? It's fucking important. Put it to the testimony, damn it. My lord! Me lord! I believe the statement just made by the witness is profoundly important. Profoundly important? But all she said. I know what she said, Santa Claus. Put it to the fucking testimony. Yes. Which is the profoundly important point. I'm almost sure of it. Hmm. I'm almost sure that I don't understand the inner workings of your Eastern mind, Council, nevertheless. Miss Gina Lestrade, you will supplement your formal testimony by repeating the last statement, please. What? Supplement? What are you on about? Don't give me all your fin. That's a, that's a phrase that I say a lot. <laughs> that I say a lot. I'm like, what the fuck are you on about? <laughs> Don't give me that fancy talk. I know what you're trying to do, but it won't work on me. That's right. Insulting the judge. Always a good move. I was, starting, I was straining my ears to work out what was going on. All I could hear was snoring. But what was going on? So you were straining to hear what was happening the entire time, since the moment you hid yourself. Uh, not exactly, no. Sorry? Well, there was no one in the cabin to start with. I couldn't just push the cushion up and have butchers to see what was- uh, Fuck, but that keeps fucking me up. To see what was what. 
But then, when I saw the swell getting on, uh, I got I got my head down so he didn't notice me. Mr. Miguel, is sat on the sea under which oh, fuck, sat on the sea under which you were hiding, correct? Yeah. Would you Adam and Eve it? <laughs> what a mug. Would you Adam and Eve it? What the fuck? <laughs> so then all I could was just listen. I was waiting to jump out of there as soon as I heard him leave. But, but, but what, what? But, but would he? Oh, but would he? Okay. But would he? Not likely. Even though we stopped here and there, I never heard the door open. So I just stayed put and listened to the drivers. His pigs, his pigs to the market, snoring, okay, snoring like an old dog. Hmm. Are there any conclusions we can draw from that, I wonder? Oh, shit! Damn it! I hate that they do that! But all makes sense. You took your time reaching conclusion, Council? <laughs> what was that from Von Zykes? Is he laughing? Very well then, continue with the cross-examination. Listen, Von Zykes, I didn't mean to press the button, it's just that... The way it works is that while... Is... While he's speaking, the option comes up, so when I press the button to go to the next text box, fucking the option's already there, and I've selected one. Usually the first one. So I fucked up, okay? Listen, I fucked up. I know I fucked up, I saw that. Okay. Let's just get to that again. Would you Adam and Eve it? That's like, the first time I ever fucking heard that shit. Hmm. Alright. Doesn't add up. Makes no sense to me. For some reason. Let me now now let me check it. Let me check that out my leisure. Alright. Let's see. Hold it, cross. Strain your ear what happened the entire time, though not exactly sorry. Alright. No one in the cabin. Just push the cushion up and butchers and whatnot. But then when I saw that the swell was getting on and got my head down, he didn't notice. And then he sat. Then he sat on top of you. Yeah, would you Adam and Eve that shit? What a mug. So then all I could do was listen. I was waiting to jump out as soon as I heard him leave. But he didn't. Even though we stepped here and there, he never heard the door. What? I'm sorry? You never heard the door open? Not once? Not once at all? It's clearly at odds with the facts. Huh? At odds? Are you sure? Oh, I'm positive, absolutely. It seems my learned Nippon uh, friend is not as dull-witted as I feared. Listen, when I'm not sorting through her fucking accent, of course it's clear. So Von Zyke realized it too. Von Zykes went, Von Zoinks! Council. Like Zoinks, man! I must insist that you bolster your claims with evidence. My lord! I expect you to demonstrate the. the al. fuck. the al. the al. al fuck. alleged. that's the word. spelt weird. <laughs> contradiction to the court. According to Miss Lestrade, while she was hiding in the omnibus that night, she heard nothing but the sound of Mr. McGill snoring. But thank Ryanosuke, thank! Slap them cheeks, boy! There's something else you should have heard. Show a piece of evidence. Show a person! Very well, my lord. Allow me to elaborate. And posticulate. On the peculiar sound of Miss Lestrade uh, could not have failed to hear that night in question. The sound very clearly came from this guy right here. Yeah. Trace fired Mason? Yeah, that's right. Yes, my lord. The sound that Miss Lestrade cannot have failed to hear is that of the victim, Mr. Mason, boarding the omnibus. Oh, yeah, that's right. I went there. 
Order. Explain your reasoning, Counsel. Miss Lestrade, allow me to confirm something. You claimed earlier that you were the first person on uh, first person aboard the Omnibus, is that correct? Yeah, of course I was. I got on while the driver was at the pub, didn't I? Ah, the next person on board the Omnibus was Mr. McGilded. That is, was. Not a soul was in the cabin when I climbed aboard. At least, not in plain sight. So, you were. To all intents and purposes, along in the enclosed cabin of the Omnibus at the time. Did I not just say as much? I wasn't traveling with anyone else, if that's what you mean. Yeah, I saw him get on, I remember. Through the crack under the seat cushion. He was in his own, uh, he was on his own for sure. And from what I've heard, the carriage made a number of stops after that, uh, in, on, uh, during its journey. During which time, did you not hear the door open or close at all? Nah, I never heard it. That's exactly what I listened for, weren't it? Waiting for the swell of leaves, something like that, I don't know, to fuck, whatever. In which case, when and how did the victim end up on the carriage? Oh, shit. We know that the victim collapsed inside the enclosed cabin on the omnibus. Therefore, Miss Lestrade's statement about what she did or did not hear is at odds with the facts. I mean, what if they just got on at the same time? Yes, this petty thief's statement was clearly flawed. Lord Von Zykes. Yes. He knew. He knew all too well that there was an inconsistency in Miss Lestrade's statement. It would seem words of thanks are order from my learned friend. What are you talking about? What the fuck you talking about, Willis? You've demonstrated matters and and pip and peck fuck impeccably. It's word. I'm starting to sunset, guys. I already started this I already started this stream, pretty tired. And now I'm getting to the point where I'm losing my mind. This witness and her colorful statements are entirely unreliable. Her words are con are fucking convenient untruths, nothing more. But she knows how to dress though. Pretty stylish. He's dead right. How could the victim not afford Omnibus? Makes no sense. And the girl's a pickpocket. Let's not forget that. Nana Putin. No! Nana Putin, stop. She didn't even say anything. I didn't want to judge the dear little mite just because she had some rather naughty ways. But I must say... I can't abide liars. And neither can I. Then you better stop this. I didn't want to judge the girl just because she had some... Uh, she had some less than... than sub... sub... Uh, fuck... sub... Uh, I'm fucking words. But I must say... Cannot abide liars. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Now listen. Now listen. 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 Everybody calm the fuck down. Maid. Miss Maid. You're supposed to be on my side. Mr. Narhoto, the five jury members leaning towards guilty. Listen, the maid. You're supposed to be on my side. Okay? Listen, I believe in you. I believe in you and I believe in grandma. Well, your consideration for others is refreshing, my Nipponese friend. To the considerable troubles you have spared me. Yes, very refreshing. Oh my fucking god. What are you playing at? Have you forgotten who you're working for, you useless Eastern... <laughs> what? Uh, this... This is, this is carnage. It's perfect. Juror number two is the only one left. Listen, listen, listen. You're supposed to be on my side, okay? I have faith in you. The way it's going, I know we can't find some new way to convince everyone Mr. McGill that is innocent. The judge will rule, and we have lost, even though he didn't rule when he was in the favor of innocent, but okay. 
Stop. Very much wanted to believe the words of one of London's most respectable gentlemen. Stop it. Stop. But. Those of us in service know we must accept hard truths. Stop. Listen. Listen. I believe your judgment. Stop it. You don't know what you're doing. Stop. Yes, the witness last statement seems to have revealed the critical inconsistency in her story. However, if we consider the possibilities that her statement is in fact the truth, it may shed entirely new light on this whole case. What are you saying? Counsel? I'm sorry, sir. Whatever do you mean? I mean, don't fucking push that. Do not do it. Stop it. Counsel, I will not tolerate your attempts to prolong my 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 adjudication. Explain yourself at once. When the accused boarded the omnibus on the night in question, the victim was nowhere to be seen. Listen, they could have just got on at the same time. Subsequently, the carriage doors were not heard opening a single time, as testified by the witness in the stand. Yet the victim's body was found inside the carriage. If this petty thief words are to be believed, how do you explain the victim's malicious appearance inside... Malicious? My bad. Miraculous appearance inside the cabin of the omnibus. Alright. They got on at the same time. There's only one way to explain how the victim came inside. He was put there after he died. There's another entrance. He was there already. Uh, he, he was already there. Clearly, he was in there already beforehand. You better, damn it. Tell me, my learned friend. What was the function of the clearly in your last dit sentence? I don't know, man. Well said, Lord Von Zykes, the clearly is troubling me so. No, 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 damn it. That's really not the point. The point is that the victim must have been in the carriage from the before, uh, beforehand. Then answer me this. By beforehand, what specific point of time are you referring? Uh, well, clearly. Alright, fuck you. Fuck you and your penalizations. Fuck you, I hate you. Alright. The penalty is, is evidently not heavy enough, judging from this Nipponese eyes. So I ask you again. Yeah, 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 okay. If it's to believe, believe the hand you hand back. Fuck. Listen. Only one way to explain it. He was put there after he died? Really? Can't really say another entrance. He was put there before he died? What? What? <laughs> what? Listen, I was just going along with they may have just boarded at the same stop, right? That would have made sense. Not at the same time, but at the same stop. You know what I mean? Like, they, they went in there individually by themselves. But... <laughs> All these choices are fucking what? <laughs> he was put there after he died. There's another entrance. Aha! The door wasn't open even once. The only explanation victim entered through, through some other way. Yeah, I know, man. Yeah, I know. Behold, the omnibus is here for all to see. Maybe he just f swung in through the window like Batman. Fixed windows cannot possibly be opened. Oh, really? Objection. But there could be. There's one possibility you haven't considered. Oh, really? Oh, yes. One other way inside, isn't there? Another opening. In which is allowed to the victim and peer inside the enclosed cabin. What? I'm sorry, what? 
All right, Council. The defense will identify the location for the court. What? Wait, that's for real, though? Huh? Here's Omnibus in which the... What? Where on earth is this entrance by which proposed victims entered the cabin? Dude, no fucking way. Dude. 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 Dude, no fucking way. No way. He didn't Batman himself, did he? Oh my fucking god. Oh my god. It was a joke. I didn't mean for it to be taken seriously. The answer's obvious. He can only have been, only be the skylight. Oh my fucking god. What the hell? Objection. Your ludicrous proposal almost has me lost for words. However, Objection. the skylight may as well be large enough for someone to pass through. Objection. So you claim. But do you have a shred of evidence to support your a battle, uh, your adult brain theory? Well, we got the carriage right here, motherfucker. I can just go in there myself. Both Mr. McGillan and Miss Lestrade said the same in their testimonies. They each heard a loud thud. Oh, what? <gasps> oh no! He was killed up top, and his body was dropped down. They threw his body down. Oh, fuck. What? Oh, no. Heard a loud thud, such as a man or someone falling on the floor. Yes, which had already been explained. As the sound of the victim falling from the seat had been assaulted with a dagger. Yes, it has, but... Would a man slipping from the seat on the floor really have made such a loud noise? A noise loud enough to cause Miss Lestrade to loud an involuntary cry, in fact? Good gracious. Perhaps, in fact. It was the moment that the victim made his entrance into the cabin. No, let me rephrase it. The victim didn't entrance the cabin as such. He fell into it. Objection. Oh, shit. You're now suggesting that the victim fell from the skylight into the cabin. Listen, Your Honor, I didn't stab him. He just fell on my knife. <laughs> How can you be so sure? Because if the victim had fell inside through the skyline, as you say, the passengers on the roof deck would have seen it happen. And yet, not one person mentioned such events in their testimony. Well, yes, that's true, but... Might a hum might a humble oh fuck. Might a humble fella make a wee comment here? Mr. McGilded? To be sure now, the two fellows who were sat on the roof that testified of four said nothing of victim falling through the skylight. But it seems to me, my lord, that there's not much case of them not saying, but I It is a case of them being unable to say. What? I think perhaps the two fellas do be having something of a compelling reason not to mention what happened. You, would you agree? Fine ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Hmm? Oh my, my goodness. Surely not. Those two chaps on the roof. You mean, the one who stuck the knife in the man's were... In the man's? Did I just say the man's? <laughs> Whose man's is this? What the fuck are you guys doing here? Just what exactly are you insinuating here, you blit- You bl you blit- fuck. Words. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> you rotter. You say- uh, Rotter, he said. You rotter. What are you insinuating? This is a flaming outrage. I've got mind to give you a, a, a blink. What? Blinker in a minute. Oh, like a shiner? He'll give you a shiner in a minute, he said. Or so will I. Mr. Fairplay. You are effectively accusing me, a city gentleman and well-respected banker. And me, a very angry hatter. 
suggesting that someone like me could have stabbed that man in the guts? It's... It's a disgrace. It's a scandalous... <laughs> I protest. I protest in the strongest possible terms. That's right, I protest too. About you, you rotten scoundrel. Oh, shit. Order! This is not the time, witnesses. I will not permit this want this this want wanton this wanton invasion on the stand. Return to the uh, return to the ante room at once. Ante room, ante room, ante room. That's what. Fuck. But but this is beyond reason, my lord. It's outrageous. It's very hurtful, you know. My lord, if I may comment. Go ahead, Lord von Zykes. It was the defense that incited the outburst from the witnesses. My learned friend has been fit to abandon all protocol and excuse the witnesses without proof. A excuse? My bad. Accuse the witnesses without proof. Accuse? I never intended to. It seems, young Nipponese, that your command of that your command of the English tongue is wanting. We propose to this court that the victim fell through the skylight from the roof deck of the Omnigos. The hypothesis cannot possibly stand without the roof passengers being aware of the events. You have branded these gentlemen liars. You have intimidated their criminal guilt. In our British court of law, that is what a term as baseless accusation. I know I was rash to put the idea forward without any actual evidence, but... You can't just dismiss it without a second thought. What are we wasting time for? Get him to the... <laughs> get them to testify. I really don't like that guy with the knife. I thought there was something fishy about the hat the moment I laid eyes on the fellow. We have to see the matters through now. One way or another. If there's filth and rubbish in the midst, we must dispose of it at once. What's happening? Mr. Naruhoda? Spectators in the public gallery, they're in a complete frenzy. Mr. Fairplay and Mr. Froust? Uh, my lord? You will take to the stand again and make another formal testimony. In reference to the indictment. Indictment. Yeah, indictment brought by the defense. Uh, yes, my lord. I didn't come here for this. There's no time to think this through. All I can do is keep pushing forward. We were the only two people on the roof deck, dead or alive, I swear that. If anything had happened there, we were sitting. Don't you think one of one or the other would have noticed? In any case, either of us, knowing the first thing about the victim, we had no reason to kill the man. The skylight was shut the entire time, I tell you. We couldn't possibly, couldn't possibly have opened it. If you're so sure the victim fell through the skylight, then where's your proof? Hmm. I'm gonna say that on listening to the testimony, it's somewhat hard to imagine. Oh, shit. How either witnesses could have performed any malevolent act on the open rooftop deck without the other noticing forthwith. That's right. You see? We're innocent, I tell you. Though logically, of course, the argument falls down if the two of you were in conclusion with one another. Conclusion? Collusion. My bad. Yeah, but definitely, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. If you work together, like... What? Huh? According to the investigations by Scotland Yard, two witnesses share no common, uh, no common dealings. Huh. Well, I don't trust coppers any more than I trust stinking rich. Says the guy with the knife. <laughs> Something doesn't feel right here. The trial is going in in our favor, really. So why do I feel so uneasy? 
Council for the defense. Uh, for the defense, over to you. Wait, what? Council for the defense. Oh. Council for the defense, over to you. The court examination, please. Ah, oh, yes, my lord. Yes. Don't worry, me lord. I got it. This is a long ass fucking trial. I remember the first game where like trials were like at least maybe an hour long. Like, at least for the early game. This is our first real this is our first actual real fucking case in the game, honestly. And we're at the third chapter. We got two chapters left. Fuck. <laughs> we wasted a whole second chapter on a fucking boat without a trial. It's crazy. Okay. We were the only two on the top of the roof. Hmm. Dead or alive, I swear it. Other would have noticed. In any case, neither of us would know the first thing about the victim. We had no reason to kill the man. Skylight was shut the entire time, I tell you. Could possibly have opened it. Uh, so the victim fell through the skylight. Where's your proof? Oh shit, where is my proof? Alright, hold up. Mm, I want to just press the only two people up there. Well, I mean, there's also the, uh, whatchamacallit, there's also the, uh, what's his name, Beepo. Beepo was up there. So, at no time did the victim, Mr. Mason, climb up to join you on the roof. Absolutely not. No question about it, he said none at all. Oh, but yes, of course. I remember seeing them both. I saw the victim. Damn, he started pointing at him. I saw the victim inside the enclosed cabin talking with the man here. Is that true, Mr. McGilded? Dear me, my lord. At the risk of repeating myself, I bore the omnibus alone and nodded off inside almost immediately. That's an outright lie, without a doubt you were engaged in. Let me stop you there, fellas, and ask. Do you have any evidence at all? Uh... It's all about evidence in the court these days, so it is. But you will, uh, you do well to remember that. Uh, I saw you with my own eyes. This is going well. Hmm. Well, it was on the final run of the omnibus at past 10 o'clock in the evening. It would certainly have been quite dark, perhaps too dark to see clearly. Is there some kind of lark? Yeah, they were they were, they were probably sitting right next to each other. This kind of joke well not next to each other, but definitely like, you know, you would notice it. Some kind of joke he said. Or perhaps one of the uh one of the other you fell asleep briefly. Are you fair dinkum what? Are you serious, sir? That's what he said? It's impossible, I tell you. I give you the keys to the vault and you could and you could fall asleep in the bitter cold. If you did manage it, your eyelids would freeze shut, you'd never open them again. Did I read that right? You give me the keys to the vault. Give me the keys to the vault if you could oh wait. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's a banker, I forgot. It was extreme, I tell you. And we had to put up with it because this man had locked the door. Any true gem would have unlocked it and let me in when I knocked. Uh, when I knocked. I'm dreadfully sorry about that, young fella. But you see, I was already with the fairies and I didn't hear you. That's a lie. I saw you through the glass. You were talking to someone. Now, now, it was a cold night, so it was. People do be seeing things that aren't really that aren't real in the cold. It's hardly surprising. Seeing things. I believe we have reached an impasse here on this peculiar point. You. Don't take it personally now, lad. If I'm a suspect in the case, then it's only a fair that you and the others, uh, fiend, fiend, you and the other fiend are too. Open. Open and free competition is what the capitalist society is all about. This isn't a competition I would like to be involved in, really. 
In the case any of us know the first thing about victim, I had no reason to kill the man. So you had never met Mr. Trace Fired, uh, Trace Fire Mason before. Thrace. I keep saying Trace. Thrace. Thrice. Whatever. Oh, oh, uh, I'm, I'm what? Lumi? What? Old Lumi? No, not once. Never. You never met the man before. You said never. And you, Mr. Frost, had a prior dealings with the victim either. That's right, sir. Headers don't have much to do with breakmakers, to be perfectly honest. No, I imagine not. You see? How many different ways can I put this? Neither of us had the... What? Neither of us had the remotest connection to the gentlemen that were inside the cabin. Why do I feel like all three of them borrowed money somehow? I mean, that would make sense. But we haven't we didn't see his name on the ledger. Excuse me. Mr. McGilded? Yes, Council? What can I be doing for you? Did the witness last statement give you pause for thought somehow? Not the remotest connection? Is that right now, I wonder? What are you insinuating? Ah, Mr. Fairplay. It's been, it's been too long, so it has. Eh? If I'm not very much mistaken, I believe it's fair approaching, is it not? Your repayment date. I beg your pardon? Pardon? You borrowed 20 guineas from me, sir. Ah, at an in, at an unsociable, um, in the fuck. Unconscionable, fuck, I, I hope I'm saying that right, rate of interest. I'm losing my mind right now. I can't read. I can't think. I can't do nothing, really. You tricked me. It is extro It is extortion. Well, now. Is that torch of begrudgery, is it? Begrudgery? Can't say the word. Sort of begrudgery that might motivate a fellow to pass his crimes off to another? Huh? And young Mr. Frost. Me, sir? What do you want with me? You do be making hats for a living, do you not? That there top hat is sliding around your head. Is that one of your own creations? Well, uh, I'm still just an apprentice, you understand. I'm learning the feel to, perf uh, to perfect the fit with uh, where a refined gent walks through the door. Hmm. The perfect fit, is it? Well, it is very dis uh, distinctive design, so it is. Any customers like this, I tell you? They like distinctive touches. Customers, such as Trice Fired Mason. Thrice Fired Mason. There was a there was a photographic print of the victim submitted for the evidence, my lord. Hmm. Oh, this you mean? I can't help but thinking the poor fellow's hat looks distinctly familiar. Would you say? Oh. Uh, oh. That's... that's one of my hats. Hmm, and that it is. So it would seem the brickmaker was a customer of yours. That sort of customer, I wager it. You could have had a quarrel with over the distinctiveness of goods. Oh no, sir, absolutely not. Well, there's really nothing more to add. It would be right to say that the two fellas here haven't the remotest connection to the victim, you see. I rest my case. You little weasel. He's better than this than I am. Gosh, this McGill certainly has been through it through <laughs> thorough in his research, hasn't he? Please. Don't let my little interruption hold you in proceedings. Hat Hunter. Huh. Alright. So was that like, was that just like an extra thing? <laughs> I'm still coming. I got a fucking achievement for it. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> was that an extra thing or was or did I need to do that? Be quite certain about that. That the skylight was shut the entire time. I'm gonna lose my block with you in a minute. He's gonna lose his rag with you in a minute. Alright. Take a look for yourselves. Go on. You see? Shut fast now, just like it was that night. So it is, of course. A fellow the size of Mr. Mason could likely break through it, still and all. What? Just look at the size of the thing, you understand? Now that- hold on there a minute, the size of the thing means nothing. Not on its own. Let's consider the bigger picture here, shall we? Let's stop biting the cane, shall we? Um... I was riding the omnibus on another occasion when... Well, I broke the wind, loudly. I shocked myself with it. It happens. This is an unexpected confession, Mr. Frost. Oh, I just mean to say, well, the point is, I tried to open the skylight, you see. But, just my luck, I couldn't make it budge. The stretch, uh, the stench was terrible. Everyone was looking daggers at me, sir. I went as red as rogue, I did. Are you expecting me to sentence you? Oh no, sir. The point is, the skylight can't be opened. I tried and tried when I was inside the cabin of shame. What? Hello? Excuse me. You haven't said anything. Do you have something to add to that, Miss Lestrade? Miss Lestrade? It opens. Huh? The skylight. It's what, we th it's what we're talking about, right? Stop. Stop. What are you doing? Stop it. All oh, the skylights open. Dead easy. More easy than you can load the weapon. It's a lie, I tell you. Otherwise, when I broke the wind, I... You can't do it from inside, you... Uh, wait, what? Can't do it from inside, you mug. Oh, yeah. Only outside. Oh. Look. A few weeks ago, I was up on the roof deck on one of them drags. And I had great haul, I mean. I had a purse coming out of my ears. Miss Lestrade, this is not a form to be Alec. <laughs> God. <laughs> not a form to be Alecizing. Alecizing? Alec... Whatever. You know what I mean. Count her coins. Well, anyways, I had a bit of scare. When I lifted the last bloke purse, got a got wise to me. All four of them surrounded me so I couldn't off the bus and leg it. So what I did was I used the skylight, open the open and catch the jump right through. Wait, what? Open the catch and jump right through. What? Yeah, the catch with them skylights is on the top. The catch. You mean the hatch? I don't fucking know. That's why you can't open them from the cabin. The skylight opens from the roof deck? Bailiff. Climb up to the roof of the omnibus at once and verify the witness's claim. Click clack. Oh, my hat. Don't you see? Order. So, it appears the street girl's statement is true. I don't believe it. Skylight opens. From the roof deck. Mr. Nanahoda? Yes. This could be the clue we've been looking for. Well, counsel for the defense, please continue with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. So the skylight opens. Perhaps I should investigate for myself. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> this is so long. Uh, well, seen the murder. Is it open now or is... Oh, where the fuck did that come from? That wasn't there earlier. What? 
Was it? That's blood, isn't it? Something wrong? Oh, it's just, well, it's nothing so obvious, that's all. Yet Von Zykes had made no mention of it. I suppose that doesn't mean, that does make it a little strange. Hmm. Such a bad feeling about this. Was that there before? Am I? No fucking way. No, that wasn't there before. No way. He spilled his wine, didn't he? It's also a different shade of red, by the way. I just want to point that out. But, yeah, it looks like fresh. It looks fresh, like, you know. What the fuck? Let's see, so the skylight was fastened before. Sorry, I thought I saw something. It was fastened before, but now the catch. Oh, uh, fuck. Catch has been undone. You should be able to open it. Okay. It's open. Let me inside. Oh, shit. Yes. It's open wide, doesn't it? Wide enough to kick someone through, certainly, Mr. Nahoto. Well, someone like me. Ha! Huh. What is it? Look! Look at this! Without question, it's blood. Why would there be blood stain there? Surely. It can't be unrelated to the case, can it? Hmm. Blood stain visible in the frame. Okay. Alright. 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 <laughs> okay. Show me the proof. I'll show you the proof. Alright, I got the proof right here. Objection. On the night in question, the victim was, fa was fatally stabbed in the stomach. And immediately afterwards, the victim's body was pushed through the skylight into the cabin below. My dog is now making noises behind me in her sleep. Those are the facts and the irrefutable proof. Remains clearly visible in the omnibus that stands before us today in the very courtroom. What? That's other Hamburg. Can't possibly have any evidence. No, you can't. I mean, we didn't do it. I tell you, it's impossible. Irrefutable proof here in this courtroom. Let me guess, you're gonna fucking, you're gonna, you're gonna, I, I walked right into one of his traps, didn't I? All right. Counsel, my lord. I believe everyone would appreciate a little clarification. I would appreciate if this fucking trial ended. <laughs> Where exactly within the omnibus is the evidence in which you allude? Point out what proves the victim fell into the roof. Uh-huh. Talking about this. Blood. Yes, it does open wide. Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Fuck, I did it again. I had to press the present button, not the goddamn examine. Yeah, I see it. Damn it. Got it! Got it! By Jupiter. Is that blood? What's that smell? Is <laughs> blood. This blood stain proves two things. First, when the incident occurred, the skylight of the omnibus was open. What? Secondly, the victim was already bleeding when he fell through the opening. Oh my. Oh dear. So it follows that Mr. McGilday, who was inside the enclosed cabin himself at the time, cannot possibly be guilty of this crime. That rhymed. Dropping the hottest bars of 2022, doing it. Order! I knew you were gonna say something. Oh wait, I thought that was fucking, I thought that was Von Zykes. But, but, but the blood could have sprayed up there when the fellow was stabbed inside the cabin. And only found its way to that one particular spot in the skylight? Sure, it would have been very convenient. 
And let's keep in mind that the skylight catch can only be unfastened from the roof deck. I myself could have been able to open it now, could I? But, but, there's no way to know for certain, is there? If the gent really fell through the skylight, I mean. Why don't you have a good look at the floor of the cabin between the two seats, Mr. Froust? Froust. It is all too plain, if you see. That the aftermath shows the poor fella dropped from fair height right there. What? No. But it can't be. Lies. Okay, there we go. My fellow jury member. Oh, what the fuck? Really? Ron Zyke's not saying anything? I think we can all agree that there's clear proof that the defendant's innocent. Can we? I believe we can, yes, sir. It's clear to me now that the filthy rubbish can be found in this courtroom. We can be? Or can't? I, I, I wasn't paying attention. Can be found in this courtroom. Oh, where it can be found in this Okay. Yeah. Pulled the wool over my eyes, did they? I won't tolerate any of the guild's carriages being sullied with blood. I won't tolerate it. Oh, I always knew the nice gentleman who gave us the delightful part couldn't have done such a thing. On three, everyone. Three. Objection. Uh, oh my god. A chilling performance, Mr. McGilded. Oh? And what would he be referring to now, Lord Von Zykes? A blood stain on the frame of the skylight? Such evidence is null and void. What? Why? For one extreme simple reason. That smear of blood never existed. Yeah, I knew it too. Objection. What? What are you talking about? Ah, it's there all. F uh, it's there for all to see, and it's clearly blood. Objection. I personally attended Scotland Yard's investigation on the omnibus. The officer involved went over the carriage with me fine-tooth comb. Wait, with me? What? Dude, what the fuck is wrong with me? With the fine-tooth comb. So, I can state with absolute certainty. Or surety, my bad. No such smear blood existed in the carriage. At least, not until the trial began. But, are you suggesting, Lord Von Zykes, that the stain of blood was fabricated, my lord? Yes. And while this court has been in session. Ah, oh, shit. Back to step one. What a pav... pavler. Pa pa pavler? Fuck, whatever. I must say I didn't expect such crude reasoning from a prosecutor as you, as you're standing, Lord Von Zykes. But I'm Magnus McGilded, a fellow known all over the capital for his fine contributions to the public life. Don't take kindly to slander, and I'll fight to the bitter end. Even if it's rolling off the tongue of the Reaper of the Bailey. Mr. McGilded. I realize that this is your first appearance in court as the accused. However, I'm very aware of your involvement behind the scenes in great many affairs of dubious nature. You are very adept when it comes to avoiding getting your hands dirty. And each time it happens, that case you're involved in it is investigated, you adapt the facts. Adapt the facts? What does that even mean? When you wield fortune the size of Mr. McGill, however ill-gotten it may be, nothing is impossible. Tampering with evidence, manipulation of the scene of crime, bribing witnesses. A toast. I toast your ability to to con to concate. Concate con con concoct. Concate. Oh, fuck. To concoct the most con uh, convenient of stories, sir. Toot toot, Lord Toot Toot? What? Tut tut? Lord Von Zykes, this will not do, to be sure. Who then now, Council? Huh? Oh, no. I think the fair is to say, 
this does all sound like rather far-fetched accuse uh, uh accuse my bad excuse by a desperate man the blood of the skyline didn't exist you say but did you all cast your minds back is it not true that the omnibus there has been in the courtroom the entire time how could anyone possibly have put a smear of blood in there without the word without the world and his wife seeing isn't that right counsel it's true the omnibus has been in full view the entire time the court has been session my learned friend hmm? here's to hearing your opinion on this matter in your own words As you wish. Does someone have tampered with the omnibus during the trial? If you ask me, I'm thinking. Could have been possible. As a defense lawyer, it's my job to advocate for the defense as best as possible. But still, I feel as though there's something even more important at stake here. There's no evidence that suggests the defendant did my... Uh, did as my learned friend suggested. However, in terms of having the opportunity to carry out the alleged tampering, there is one possibility. Oh, good gracious. Explain yourself, counsel. Oh my fucking god. Yes, there is. It seems my learned Nipponese friend has no intention of running from, the, uh, from this deceit. Deceit? I'm sure everyone still remembers clearly. The recess that we were forced to take. As a result, my dog is like fucking making noises. As a result of the smoke grenade fired by the witness currently in the stand, Miss Gina Lestrade. What's going on? Be careful. Cover your face. Bailiff, don't let the accused escape. Secure the omnibus. I hereby call an emergency recess. Bailiff, ensure the defendant is, is in custody and clear the courtroom. The courtroom was filled with smoke, and everyone was thrown into confusion. All of us were made to believe this chamber. To, to believe? To leave this chamber. In that brief interval, under the veil of smoke and in the chaos. It could have been possible to steal inside the omnibus. To steal inside the omnibus. That's a way of phrasing. Are you wise? What are you trying to pull? You rotten, fickless gorger? Gorger? Gouger? Gouger. That's the word. Gouger. Fickless gouger. You're supposed to be defending me. It was a wicked plot. There's a plot to undermine me, so it is. Objection. Whatever you think this is, it changes nothing. The facts are the same. After this courtroom was evacuated earlier as a result of the smoke grenade, a number of inconsistencies materialized in relation to the omnibus. Inconsistencies such as... To start with, the storage compartment underneath the rear passenger seat. When the police investigated the omnibus, this compartment was full of the driver's items. Secondly, we have the smear of blood on the edge of the skylight. As I said, that was not present at the start of the trial this morning. Unfortunately, Lord Von Zykes, no one is able to collaborate your... Uh, cal calibrate. I keep, I keep saying collaborate, but it's the same word, right? Collaborate your claims. That's true. When Omnibus was first wheeled out, both the storage compartment and the skylight were shut. Accordingly, I'm afraid to say, we cannot establish with any certainty, that this evidence is in result of tampering or not. Indeed, my lord. No doubt there was not a single person who saw fit to verify such things. What do you think? Sorry. What? About the Omnibus. Is there anything else unusual about the Omnibus? I 
got an inkling. My lord? Yes, Council? There was one further inconsistency. I marked that Shirley could not have been present at the start of the trial. What? What in the devil's name are you gonna say now? If you dare betray me, you little maggot, you better start watching your back. Silence, McGilded. The court awaits the defendant's clarification. The trial keeps swinging one way and the other. I have no idea what the truth is and what's the deception. What am I supposed to believe here? I shall have to ask you to elaborate, Counsel. Ah, oh, shit. What exactly is... Uh, mark out my claims. I mean, it's also this blood on the floor, right? If that's what he's talking about. I, mean, I don't see nothing else to talk about here. Yeah, I'm just gonna point out the blood on the floor. Got it. Got it. We consider that the victim fell through the skylight on the floor of the cabin. You would certainly expect to find signs of blood where he landed. But as far as I recall, this blood stain on the cabin floor was not there when the omnibus was first brought into the courtroom. Good lord! Yes, I do believe you're correct, counsel. Well said. Although, as advocate for the defense, one might say that that was a very careless slip of the tongue. Listen, Von Zykes, if I'm gonna whip your ass, I'm gonna do it fair. Only the bloodstain on the floor is a deceptive piece of evidence. But, the question is whether the evidence is genuine or whether it was unlawfully fabricated by someone. I feel compelled to admit that there's at least a possibility that the evidence is fake. This trial is over. Mr. McGilded. I've done everything I possibly can to cooperate with the court, but... It is all over now. But... But you're the defendant. It's over, I tell ye. Oh, shit. Memory. Recollection. What people think they saw. It's all nonsense. Facts are what counts. Facts is the blood stains is there now. Well, over the course of this desperate trial, long and extremely drawn out as it has been, the law, the good-for-nothing Reaper of the Bailey has failed to present any decisive evidence at all. I'm scandalized, so I am. I thought better of Lord von Zykes. Well, my lord. I must concur with the defense. The affirmation, the unaffirmed recollections of an individual cannot stand as evidence. At this moment in time, the peculiar blood stains in question is very much in existence, and in the absence of any credible methods by which the, by which this proves its alleged previous non-existence, my mouth is fucking dry as shit right now. I regret to say that it would be improper for this trial to continue. Your lordship can't be serious. I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> my lips are dry. I'm gonna have a drink of water. Lord Von Zykes, what is your position? The prosecution, my lord, has no further witnesses or evidence to present. Very well. In that case, as I believe we have explored every possible avenue in this matter, I shall proceed to my adjudication. As formality, I am of course obliged to confirm with the defendants first. What formality? As things stand at the moment, it would seem that Mr. McGilded will be found not guilty. Yes. Which would mean we've won. Is that really the right outcome here? 
Is it really all right for the trial to be to come to an end now with all these unexplained inconsistencies? Counsel, for the defense, your closing statement, please. Yes, my lord. The defense believes... You gotta be fucking kidding me, what? No, 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 you can't do that to me, no. No, you can't do that. No, no. That's bad. Wait, did I just overwrite the auto save? Oh, wait, no, I didn't. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, did I just overwrite the fucking auto save? <clears throat> I gotta save here because what the fuck? Also, we're, we're reaching time. But I got, I got a little bit more time left. The defense believes... Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I'll get my verdict, right? But... Mm. Listen. I said it the first time I fucking walked in this room. First time I walked in this courthouse. And I saw my fucking... I saw my client, and I looked at that motherfucker, and I said, oh, that guy's fucking guilty, <laughs> right? I can't, I can't do it in good conscience, but it's not my job to do it in good conscience. I can't, I can't let my boy Cosma roll around in his grave. I'm here in this courtroom today to advocate for the defense of my client, Mr. McGilded. However, at this moment in time, I cannot in all good conscience, at its fullest, at its fullest, wow, uh, at its fully to the, what the fuck, at, at its, what the hell is that even, what, what, what the fuck is that word? At its fully to, uh, to the defense innocence. What are you saying, man? He's like, my man, what are you saying? <laughs> Without any question, there is no conclusive evidence to prove that the defendant is guilty. However, there is also no conclusive evidence to prove that he is innocent. Good. Good gracious me. You're out of your mind, man. Order. This is unprecedented behavior, counsel. A defense lawyer calling the accused innocent into question? Are you of sound mind, young man? Are you, are you crazy, man? I mean, look at him. Dude has no neck. Can you trust him? Uh, it was a grand decision to appoint you as my lawyer. It was a grand decision. What? I must say, I didn't expect quite such an exciting spec uh, spectacle at, at the end there, but still. Here, have this for your troubles. Throwing fucking money at me? Your job here is done, fella. And some fine work you've done, so you have. What do you mean? It's just the right, uh, right honorable gentleman to six uh, what? To succeedingly? Succeed, succeed, Bleh, words. Put it at a four. The trial cannot go on anymore. And your closing statement there was, how do I put it now? Nothing more than a formality. He's right, my decision didn't mean shit. Did he just fucking play us all? I really don't know what to make of all this. Was the evidence we seen genuine or was it fake? His lordship will be fuming. And unsightly rubbish should be disposed of promptly, as I said. Stinking rich are always guilty of something. You mark my words. I feel terribly ashamed that I ever doubted the lovely man who gave us a lovely part. 
And now that proceedings have unfolded this way, I'm compelled to declare a premature end to this trial. Furthermore, the court must accept the defendant's plea. This motherfucker played us all. And I called it too. The moment I saw his ass, I'm like, this guy looks guilty as shit. I thank you kindly, my lord. I hereby pronounce the verdict of this court. Objection. But we still haven't determined if the blood stains of the omnibus is genuine or not. We don't know if these witnesses are telling the truth or packs of lies. We have no idea but about the truth. Lord Von Zykes. My lord. The case made by the prosecution was flawed, plain and simple. If indeed the omnibus presented as evidence was tampered with, the prosecution is at fault for allowing such a disgraceful provision of justice to take place. My sincerest apologies, my lord. Objection. But wait! But wait, there's more. <laughs> when, we were, when we were evacuated from the courtroom, Lord Von Zykes ordered the evidence to be secured. I'm afraid the prosecution cannot shun responsibilities in this matter. That, that's so unfair! Life's unfair. <laughs> uh, the culpability of the defendant has not, at the present time, been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to prefer... Pre what the fuck? Prefer... Whatever. Prefer, uh, prefer judgment. Can't read. What? Well, Lord Von Zykes, it's been a pleasure, so it has. And as for you, my dear fella, I couldn't have asked for a better defense. Do you mean to tell me that this has all been a grand waste of time? I mean, it felt like it. Tis the law of the land, my good man. If you'd like to pursue this matter further, you can always go ahead and try to change the law. Magnus McGilded. Good grief. You've more to say you have. Just one thing. A warning. This is far from over. Well, something to be looking forward to then. I hereby pronounce the defendant, Mr. Magnus McGilded. Oh my god, I feel like shit. <laughs> Jesus. This is the fucking- This is the second time in this game we got fucking played. Are you kidding me? I won, but I got played. God, that feels so terrible. With the courtroom in pandemonium for the second time that day, the judge delivered his verdict. And my first of a trial in Great Britain came to an abrupt end. With the defendant being found not guilty, understandably a victory for us, What the fuck? Can I call that a victory? <laughs> that certainly was a long trial. Oh uh, yeah, it was. Took two fucking streams to get through it. Yeah, it was. Your first ever trial on foreign soil, and your first victory. It was a wonderful performance. My heartful congratulations. <laughs> I don't feel like being congratulated. And to you too, Mrs. Sada. Thank you for the assistance. 
I suppose we should be happy. The trouble is, we're still completely in the dark about what actually happened. Well, we didn't have enough time. But isn't it wrong? I mean, who is actually responsible for Mr. Mason's death? We don't even know that. The sole aim for the defense is to uh, obtain a verdict that... That ex... God damn it. That extraordinates the def Fuck. Extraordinates? Extra what the fuck is that word? <laughs> I need a dictionary with me at all times. The defendant. You carried out your duties to perfection. Aye, that you did. Don't fucking talk to me, you murderer. You fucking... You fucking paid her. You paid her to fuck up the evidence. Ugh. I feel so bad. Mr. McGilded. And the girls with them, too. Well, it seems the stories are true. Huh? What stories? About the six enormous fireworks that do be... What? That do... Oh, fuck. About the six enormous fireworks they do be letting off when there's a verdict of not guilty. Oh yeah, there were fireworks, I guess. Well, not fireworks, really. More like confetti. I'm sure you must have seen them now. Spectacular, wasn't it? Yes, definitely. I heard it was a sight to behold. And to be sure it was. And I have you to thank, I suppose. For having an opportunity to see it. Oh. I don't know about that. I'm not sure I really did anything. What on earth are you saying, fella? How did I walk out of there a free man, then? I don't think it was so much thanks to me as down to your planning. You set this up. Like, this man, you showed it like, like, <laughs> you saw how he gave her the signal? <laughs> he said on my signal. He's like, I think the, I think the culprit can be in this very room right about now. <laughs> like, that side glance, he's like, that's the signal. Do your job. Uh, you're a straight-talking fella, aren't you? I must say. I mean, listen. When he asked me, we walked in the room, right? And then he looked at me. He said, he said, oh, I see what's going on here. You think I did it, didn't I? And then I fucking looked at him and I said, yeah, you're guilty as shit, dog. <laughs> He's like, what? Even Makotobo looked at me. She went, she went, what? <laughs> she said, you serious? I must say, you had me astray in the head, uh, you had me astray in the head there once or twice. But you're young and headstrong. There's water on the bridge. Congratulations, Mr. Gilded, on having your name cleared. But nothing resolved. There's only one thing that matters to me. Oh? Aye. You've all seen that I didn't do the the, uh, uh, adios, ad, adios, fucking, oh, fucking word, man. <sighs> Choice words, then. They choose some very, they choose some good words that most people don't use. All right. You seen that I didn't do the deed. That's basically what he's saying. It's grand, is it not? I suppose it is. Now, the fine fellows of Scotland Yard can take matters in their hands and sort out the weeds themselves, uh, the weed details. I was about to say sort out the weeds themselves, but that's not what he said. Uh, they'll see it for what it is. They'll get to the truth. Absolutely, f I have absolute faith in them. So I have, after all. I do be providing good numbers of their wages with all the tax I pay. It's not that funny. So then. As we agreed uh, for hand, 1,000 guineas for your troubles, fella. Oh, no, I couldn't possibly accept that much. Oh. Be what? Be what? Be waste? Be what? Oh, it'll be a waste. That's what he's saying. You're a humble person from the east. Hmm. Well, if you insist, oh come on, man, should at least gave me a little something, something, you know, so I can hook me and Mikotaba up with a nice little room, and and you know, not not in not in not in that type of way, you know. Uh, hook us up with the with the with the living quarters that's what i mean 
but have this. Still in all, you deserve a reward. Mr. Magnus McGilded. You're free to go. Everything's ready, sir. If you'd like to follow me into the courtroom. Into the courtroom? What's this, officer? It's sooner than I was led to believe. I hope it's not inconvenient, sir. There are some changes to the schedule. Well, I must be making tracks now. It is time to be inspection, uh, uh, for the inspection. Sorry? What inspection? They're gonna examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I asked if I could be present at the time myself. They're going to examine it again? Now? Naturally, I'm under no obligation to take part in any more in this matter. But as an upstanding member of London society, I'll be doing my best to help where I can. Just a gentleman's duty, so it is. So then, fare thee well. It was an absolute pleasure meeting you. I hope we have a whale of a time here. I uh, hope you have a whale of a time here while you're studying in Great Britain. And there he goes, a free man. Oh, I forgot she was here too. So, uh, do you want to? Do you want to be the pearls of this adventure? We can use a third member. No, oh, put it down. Stop. Stop. No. What are you doing? Don't move. Don't move. Whereas I want to say, get a move on. She already d does take forever to load the thing. Miss Lestrade, would you mind putting that thing down? You you can be a sidekick. Come on, you can hang out with me and, and Mikotoba. You're a grown-up. Sorry? And I ate all grown-ups. Oh, no, that's bad. Ah, there you are. Huh? Naughty, naughty, running off like that. Is this some kind of picnic? Who's this little girl now? And, ta and taking it with you as well. I was looking forward to the trial run of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. What? Why, why does everybody have a gun? Do you want to play? You won't beat me. What? Excuse me, but who are you? Oh, good day to you. I'm well. The inventor, I suppose, of that machine. The inventor. Well, normally smoke grenades are so dull, don't you agree? White, white, and more white. If you have to be shrouded in smoke, it can at least be a pretty color, I thought to myself. Do we have to be- Oh. Oh. Oh, you work with- You work with shlomes, don't you? He had little smoke grenade things too, right? Do you have to be shrouded in smoke though? At all? I just took my eyes off of it for a moment while I was changing onto a, uh, changing onto a different omnibus and she pinched it. Luckily, I fiddled with it. A telegraphic beacon. A tell her what's it what? I have no idea what this girl's talking about. Anyways, you're coming with me now, back to my laboratory. What? What for? To apologize, of course, silly. To my tactician. What? what? You mean, say sorry? You must say sorry when you've done something wrong. Surely an adult has told you that before. An adult? Hmm. I don't listen to no adults. Come along, then. Follow me. Fine. Have it your way. You guys are kind of cool. Can I hang out with you guys? Oh god. You see, I knew... <laughs> oh god, you see, I knew what... Uh, knew what fuck, I can't even read it. I knew what... <laughs> I knew you want to do that right thing. Uh, do the right thing in the end. I'm sorry, I couldn't even read it. I'm fairly sure she, want, she wants to not get shot by the massive gun of yours.
Are we leaving now? Bye bye. So sorry for all the fuss. She was a lively one. Well, he thinks perhaps we ought to be on our way now, too? Yes, you're right. But where to? Oh! We haven't had time to find a place to stay. No sooner we've arrived in London, we have to rush here. All our traveling cases are still with the bailiff. Mm. I was originally planning to spend today in search of lodgings. But at this late hour in the day, I'm afraid we may be out of luck. Don't worry, though. I have a plan. If worse comes to words, I have a lovely park. Uh, I heard of a lovely park we can spend the night. Please tell me you're not thinking of McGilded Park. I know it may be a little chilly at the time of year, but... You, you, your usefulness will get us through. I'm not so sure about that one. I think a midwinter London nightfall will freeze your... Sorry, uh, fuck, I can't read. I think a midwinter, a midwinter London night will freeze a young person solid just as easily as an elderly one. Oh dear, that doesn't sound agreeable. Now I start to regret turning McGilded down. The 1,000 guineas would have paid for a lovely warm room or a mansion. See, that's that's what I said. Just fucking take the money so you can get some place to stay. No one ever wants to fucking listen to me. And so, the trial to determine my worthiness for the study tour was over by the end of the first day in London. However, as we were soon to learn, there were more trying times ahead. Just as the Reaper of the Bailey had warned, the case was far from over. End of chapter? Please end of chapter, goddammit. By the time I got here, it was already engulfed. No one was supposed to be allowed in here before we started investigating. <gasps> no. Oh, good God. There's, there's someone in there. Oh. Oh. This can't be. Dude. My, I'm not gonna lie, my mouth was open the whole time. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god. Was that... Was that McGilded? Did someone throw his ass in the fire? It was either McGilded or the bailiff that fucking let him in there. Oh my god. Okay. Well. Oh. Whoa. Fucking woof. Uh, well, on, on, on that note, uh, oh shit. Oh no. <laughs> well, okay, on that note, um, uh, we're gonna, uh, gonna end the stream here. That's the second time we got played in this fucking game. I just want to point that out. Fucking. The fucking. Uh, the goddamn British lady. Fucked us over. And now McGill that fucked us over. But he's probably dead now. I would assume. Uh. Yeah. That, I, I was not expecting that. Alright. So. I'm going to end the stream now. It's getting late for me. I already started the stream tired as fuck. Surprised I even made it through. Um, been going for like three hours now, almost three and a half hours. So we, we made progress. We're on the fourth, you know, fourth chapter out of five. I'm assuming, I'm assuming there's five chapters. Let's check. Let's check. Let's all check together. Say, assuming there's five. Oh no. Okay. All right. Yeah, there's five, right? 
Um, so, you know, we're, we're on four. Next time we come back to more Radius Attorney, we'll start the, uh, the fourth episode. Oh, fucking yawn. Holy shit. We'll start the fourth episode. That'll probably take us, like, I don't know, two or three streams. Something like that. Probably. Who knows? Um, you know, a as always, uh, the schedule is the schedule. But if I, if I, you know, show up anytime earlier before the schedule, if I stream, if I have free time or whatever, um, I'll either be playing more Persona or more Brain Ace Attorney for like an hour or two, maybe. Uh, and if that happens, I'll let you guys know via Twitter or the, or the, um, YouTube community tab, but I, I'm trying to mostly get more involved with Twitter. So probably via Twitter, I'll do that. I just don't want my whole Twitter feed being fucking like, Oh, it's an upload here. There's a stream here. Right. You know, cause that gets kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, there's that. Uh, I was supposed to upload today on YouTube. I didn't cause I went to sleep like all day. So I'm going to do that later today. I promise. I promise this time I, I literally have them uploaded. I just got up, click the publish button and then, uh, you know, nothing's changing on YouTube. Uh, progress has been made. I want to point out before the start of the stream, I was sent an email. Uh, progress has been made on the artwork for the Pokemon marathon stuff going on. So, you know, I, I talked about it before where. The person who was supposed to do the artwork for the first let's play you know kicking it off with pokemon blue uh that they backed out so currently i'm looking for someone else to do that but the person in charge of the artwork for pokemon crystal that was sent to me so it's completely done now and they did a fucking fantastic job i can't wait for you guys to see it and yeah there's that so hopefully Hopefully sometime this month we'll get started on that on the YouTube channel. Been waiting to do it for a while. And then, um, you know, that's pretty much it. That's the plan. So for those who came and watched, oh shit, before I, you know, do my outro. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please, 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 please come and think about watching on Twitch because you get to see the playthroughs early, way early, by the way. Um, and you know. I don't upload these playthroughs until they're done uh, via the Twitch stream, you know, and that can take forever. And then I, after that, I have to edit them and upload them and all that bullshit, you know. So you want to catch some of the shit that we're doing a little bit earlier, head on to Twitch, check it out. Follow me on Twitch if you're not. If you're watching this on YouTube and you liked it, please consider subscribing, right? And if you are subscribed... Click the bell. It gives you notifications for when the next video comes out. You know, and uh, if you did really enjoy this video, click the like button, right? It really helps out, like, a lot. Um, like, really, a lot. So, please do that. It helps me out. Or if you disliked it, I don't care. Click it. Go ahead. Still engagement. Um, <laughs> sound like an asshole saying that. But, yeah. There's that. And that's pretty much it. Right? So, you know, uh, for those who came and watched live on Twitter, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. Right? I uh, hope to see you again. And, yeah, time for the outro, as always. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care. <laughs>